The first book of Adam and Eve, also called The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. On the third day, God planted the garden in the east of the earth, on the border of the world, eastward, beyond which, toward the sun rising, one finds nothing but water that encompasses the whole world, and reaches to the borders of heaven. And to the north of the garden there is a sea of water, clear and pure to the taste, like nothing else, so that through the clearness of it one may look into the depths of the earth. And when a man washes himself in it, becomes clean of the cleanness of it, and white of its whiteness, even if he was dark. And God created that sea of his own good pleasure, for he knew what would come of the man he should make, so that after he had left the garden on account of his transgression, men should be born in the earth from among whom righteous ones should die, whose souls God would raise at the last day, when they should return to their flesh, should bathe in the water of that sea, and all of them repent of their sins. But when God made Adam go out of the garden, he did not place him on the border of it northward, lest he should draw near to the sea of water. And he and Eve washed themselves in it, be cleansed of their sins, and forget the transgression they had committed, and be no longer reminded of it in the thought of their punishment. Then again, as to the south, southern side of the garden, God was not pleased to let Adam dwell there, because when the wind blew from the north, it would bring him on the southern side the delicious smell of the trees of the garden. Wherefore God did not put Adam there, lest he should smell the sweet smell of those trees, forget his transgression, and find consolation for what he had done, take delight in the smell of the trees, and not be cleansed from his transgression. Again also, because God is merciful and of great pity, and governs all things in a way he alone knows, he made our father Adam dwell in the western border of the garden, because on that side the earth was very broad, and God commanded him to dwell there in a cave, in a rock, the cave of treasures, below the garden. But when our father Adam and Eve went out of the garden, they trod the ground on their feet, not knowing that they were treading. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden, and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, and large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled, and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because, whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manner of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land which they did not know, and had never seen. And because at that time they were filled with the grace of a bright nature, they had not hearts turned towards earthly things. Therefore God had pity on them. And when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden, he sent his word to the father Adam and Eve, and raised them from their fallen state. God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and you and your seed shall dwell and walk in it until the days and years are fulfilled, when I shall send to the word that created you, and against which you have transgressed, the word that made you come out of the garden, and that raised you when you were fallen. Yes, the word that will save you again when the five days and a half are fulfilled. And when Adam heard these words from God, and of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five and a half days for him, to the end of the world. And Adam wept and prayed to God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and likeness, explained to him that these were five thousand and five hundred years, and how one would then come and save him and his seed. But God had before that made his covenant with our father Adam in the same terms before he came out of the garden, when he was by the tree whereof Eve took the fruit and gave it to him to eat. Inasmuch as when our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by that tree and saw how God had then changed the appearance of it into another form, and how it withered. And as Adam went to it, he feared, trembled, and fell down. But God, in his mercy, lifted him up, and then made his covenant with him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden, and saw the cherub with a sword of flashing fire in his hand, and the cherub grew angry and frowned at him, both Adam and Eve became afraid of him, and thought he meant to put them to death. So they fell on their faces and trembled with fear. But he had pity on them, and showed them mercy, and turning from them went up to heaven, and prayed to the Lord, and said, Lord, you did send me to watch at the gate of the garden with a sword and of fire, 
And when your servants Adam and Eve saw me, they fell on their faces, and were as dead. O my Lord, what shall we do to your servants? Then the Lord had pity on them, and showed them mercy, and sent his angel to keep the garden. And the word of the Lord came to Adam and Eve, and raised them up. And the Lord said to Adam, I told you that at the end of the five days and a half I will send my word and save you. Strengthen your heart, therefore, and abide in the cave of, cave of treasures, of which I have before spoken to you. And when Adam heard this word from God, he was comforted with that which God had told him. For he had told him how he would save him. But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the garden, their first home. And indeed, when Adam looked at his flesh, that it was altered, he wept bitterly, and Eve over what they had done. And they walked and went gently down to, into the cave of treasures. And as they came to it, Adam wept over himself and said to Eve, Look at this cave that is to be our prison in this world, and a place of punishment. What is it compared with the garden? What is its narrowness compared with the space of the other? What is this rock by the side of those groves? What is the gloom of this cavern compared with the light of the garden? What is this overhanging ledge of rock to shelter us compared with the mercy of the Lord that overshadowed us? What is the soil of this cave compared with the garden land, this earth strewn with stones, and that planted with delicious fruit trees? And Adam said to Eve, Look at your eyes and at mine, which before looked at angels in heaven, praising, and they too without ceasing. But now we do not see as we did. Our eyes have become of flesh. They cannot see in the same manner as they saw before. Adam said again to Eve, What is our body today compared with what it was in former days when we dwelt in the garden? After this, Adam did not like to enter the cave under the overhanging rock, nor would he have entered it. But he bowed to God's orders and said to himself, Unless I enter the cave, I shall again become a transgressor. Then Adam and Eve entered the cave and stood praying, in their own tongue unknown to us, but which they knew well. And as they prayed, Adam raised his eyes and saw the rock in the roof of the cave that covered him overhead, so that he should neither see, could neither see heaven nor God's creatures. So he wept and smote heavily upon his breast until he dropped and was as dead. And Eve sat weeping, for she believed he was dead. And then she arose, spread her hands toward God, uh, begging him for mercy and pity and saying, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the sin which I committed and remember it not against me. For I alone caused your servant to fall from the garden into this lost estate, from light into darkness, and from the place of joy into this prison. O oh God, look upon this your servant, fallen like this, and raise him from his death, that he may weep and repent of his transgression which he committed through me. Take not away his soul this once, but let him live that he may stand after the measure of his repentance, and do your will as before his death. But if you do not raise him up, then, O oh God, take away my own soul, that I may be like him, and leave me not in this dungeon, one and alone, for I could not stand alone in this world, but with him only. For you, O oh God, did cause a slumber to come upon him, and did take a bone from his side, and did restore the flesh in place of it by your divine power. And you did take me the bone and make me a woman, bright like him, with heart, reason, and speech, and in flesh like, uh, like his own. And you did make me after the likeness of his face, by your mercy and power. O Lord, I and he are one, and you, O God, are our creator. You are he who made us both in one day. Therefore, O God, Give him life, that he may be with me in this strange land, while we dwell in it on account of our transgression. But if you will not give him life, then take me, even me, like him, that we may both be die in the same day. And Eve wept bitterly and fell upon our father Adam and from her great sorrow. But God looked upon them, for they had killed themselves through great grief. But he would raise them and comfort them. He, therefore, sent his word to them, that they should stand and be raised forthwith. And the Lord said to Adam and Eve, You transgressed of your own free will until you came out of the garden in which I had placed you. Of your own free will you have transgressed through your desire for divinity, greatness, and exalted state such as I have, so that I deprived you of the bright nature in which you then were, 
and I made you come out of the garden to this land, rough and full of trouble. If only you had not transgressed my commandment and had kept my law and had not eaten of the fruit of the tree near which I told you not to come. And there were fruit in the trees in the garden better than that one. But the wicked Satan, who continued not in his first estate, nor kept his faith, in whom was no good intent towards me, and who, though I had created him, yet set me at naught, and sought the Godhead, so that I hurled him down from heaven. He it is who made the tree appear pleasant in your eyes, until you ate of it by listening to him. Thus you have transgressed my commandment, and therefore I have brought upon you all these sorrows. For I am God the Creator, who, when I created my creatures, did not intend to destroy them. But after they had sorely roused my anger, I punished them with grievous plagues until they repent. But if on the contrary they still continue hardened in their transgression, they shall be under a curse forever. When Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they wept and sobbed yet more. But they strengthened their hearts in God, because they now felt that the Lord was to them like a father and a mother. And for this very reason they wept before him and sought mercy from him. Then God had pity on them and said, O oh Adam, I have made my covenant with you, and I will not turn from it. Neither will I let you return to the garden until my covenant of the great five days and a half is fulfilled. Then Adam said to God, O oh Lord, you did create us and made, a, made us fit to be in the garden, and therefore I transgressed. You made all beasts come to me that I should name them. Your grace was then on me, and I named everyone according to your mind, and you made them all subject to me. But now, O Lord, that I have transgressed your commandments, all beasts will rise against me and will devour me, and Eve, your handmaid, and will cut off our life from the face of the earth. I therefore beseech you, O God, that since you have made us to come out of the garden and have made us to be in a strange land, you will not let the beasts hurt us. When the Lord heard these words from Adam, he had pity on him and felt that he had truly said that the beasts of the field would rise and devour him and Eve because he, the Lord, was angry with them too on account of their transgressions. Then God commanded the beasts and the birds and all that move upon the earth to come to Adam and to be familiar with him and not to trouble him and Eve, nor yet any of the good and righteous among their posterity. Then the beasts did obeisance to Adam according to the commandment of God, except the serpent against which God was angry. It did not come to Adam with the beasts. Then Adam wept and said, O oh God, when we lived in the garden and our hearts were lifted up, we saw the angels that sang praises in heaven, but now we do not see as we used to. No, when we entered the cave, all creation became hidden from us. Then God the Lord said to Adam, When you were under subjection to me, you had a bright nature within you, and for that reason could you see the things that were far away. But after your transgression, your bright nature was withdrawn from you, and it was not left to you to see the things that are far off, but only near at hand, after the ability of the flesh, for it is brutish. When Adam and Eve had heard these words from God, they went their way, praising and worshipping him with a sorrowful heart, and God ceased to commune with them. Then Adam and Eve came out of the cave of treasures and drew near to the garden gate, and there they stood to look at it and wept for having come away from it. And Adam and Eve went from before the gate of the garden to the southern side of it, and found there the water that watered the garden from the root of the tree of life, and that parted itself from there into four rivers over the earth. Then they came and drew near to the water and looked at it, and saw that it was the water that came forth from under the root of the tree of life in the garden. And Adam wept and wailed and smote upon his breast for being severed from the garden, and said to Eve, why have you brought upon me, upon yourself, and upon our seed, so many of these plagues and punishments? And Eve said to him, What is it that you have seen to weep and to speak to me in this way? And he said to Eve, See you not this water that was with us in the garden, that watered these trees of the garden, and flowed out from there? And we, when we were in the garden, did not care about it. But since we came to this strange land, we love it, and turn to it, and use it for our body. But when Eve heard these words from him, she wept, and from the soreness of her weeping they fell into that water, and would have put an end to themselves in it, so as never again to return and look at the creation. For when they looked upon the work of creation, they felt that they must put an end to themselves. 
Then God, merciful and gracious, looked upon them, thus lying in the water, and near unto death, and sent an angel who brought them out of the water, and laid them on the seashore as dead. Then the angel went up to God, was welcome, and said, O God, your creatures have breathed their last. Then God sent his word to Adam and Eve, who raised them from their death. And Adam said, after he was raised, O God, while we were in the garden, we did not require or care for this water, but since we came to this land, we cannot do without it. Then God said to Adam, While you were under my command and was a bright angel, you knew not this water, but after that you had transgressed my commandment, you cannot do without water wherein to wash your body and make it grow, for it is now like that of beasts, and is in want of water. And when Adam and Eve heard these words from God, they wept a bitter cry. And Adam asked God to let him return to the garden and look at it a second time. But God said to Adam, I have made you a promise. When that promise is fulfilled, I will bring you back into the garden, you and your righteous seed. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Then Adam and Eve felt themselves burning with thirst and heat and sorrow. And Adam said to Eve, we shall not drink of this water, even if we were to die. O oh, Eve, when this water comes into our inner parts, it will increase our punishments and that of our children that shall come after us. Both Adam and Eve then withdrew from the water and drank none of it at all, but came and entered the cave of treasures. But when in it Adam could not see Eve, he only heard the noise she made. Neither could she see Adam, but heard the noise he made. Then Adam wept in deep affliction, and beat upon his breast. And he arose and said to Eve, Where are you? And she said to him, Lo, I am standing in this darkness. He then said to her, Remember the bright nature in which we live while we abode in the garden. O oh, Eve, remember the glory that rested upon us in the garden. O oh, Eve, remember the trees that overshadowed us in the garden while we moved among them. O oh, Eve, remember that while we were in the garden we knew neither light nor day. Think of the tree of life from below which flowed with wa the water that shed luster over us. Remember, O Eve, the garden land and the brightness of it. Think, O oh, think of that garden in which there was no darkness while we dwelt in it. Whereas no sooner did we come into this cave of treasures than darkness encompassed us round about until we can no longer see each other and all the pleasure of this life has come to an end. Then Adam beat upon his breast he and Eve, and they mourned the whole night until dawn drew near, and they sighed over the length of the night in Miazia. And Adam beat himself, and threw himself on the ground in the cave from bitter grief, and because of the darkness, and lay there as dead. But Eve heard the noise he made in falling upon the earth, and she felt about for him with her hands, and found him like a corpse. Then she was afraid, speechless, and remained by him. But the merciful Lord looked down on looked on the death of Adam and Eve's silence from fear of the darkness. And the word of God came to Adam and raised him from his death and opened Eve's mouth so that she might speak. Then Adam arose in the cave and said, O oh God, why has light departed from us and darkness come over us? Why do you leave us in this long darkness? Why will you plague us in this way? And this darkness, O Lord, where was it before it came upon us? It is such that we cannot see each other. For so long as we were in the garden, we neither saw nor even knew what darkness is. I was not hidden from Eve, neither was she hidden from me, until now that she cannot see me. And no darkness came upon us to separate us from each other. But she and I were both in one bright light. I saw her and she saw me. Yet now, since we came into this cave, darkness has come upon us and parted us asunder, so that I do not see her and she does not see me. O oh Lord, will you then plague us with this darkness? Then when God, who is merciful and full of pity, heard Adam's voice, he said to him, O oh Adam, so long as the good angel was obedient to me, a bright light rested on him and on his hosts. But when he transgressed my commandment, I deprived him of that bright nature, and he became dark, and when he was in the heavens, in the realms of the light, he knew the, nothing of darkness, but he transgressed, and I made him fall from heaven upon the earth, and it was this darkness that came upon him. And on you, O Adam, while in my garden and obedient to me, did that bright light rest also, 
But when I heard of your transgression, I deprived you of that bright light. Yet of my mercy I did not turn you into darkness, but I made you your body of flesh, over which I spread this skin, in order that it may bear cold and heat. If I had let my wrath fall heavily upon you, I should have destroyed you, and had I dis turned you into darkness, it would have been as if I had killed you. But in my mercy I have made you as you are. When you did transgress my commandment, O Adam, I drove you from the garden and made you come forth into this land and commanded you to dwell in this cave. And darkness came upon you as it did upon him who transgressed my commandment. Thus, Adam, has the night deceived you. It is not to last forever, but is only of twelve hours. When it is over, daylight will return. Do not sigh, therefore, neither be moved. And say not in your heart that this darkness is long and drags on wearily, and say not in your heart that I plague you with it. Strengthen your heart and be not afraid. This darkness is not a punishment. But, O oh Adam, I have made the day and I have placed the sun in it to give light, in order that you and your children should do your work. For I knew that you should sin and transgress and come out into this land. Yet would I not force you, nor be heard upon you, nor shut up, nor doom you to your fall, through your fall, nor through your coming out from light to darkness, nor yet through your coming from the garden into this land. For I made you of the light, and I willed to bring out children of light from you and like to you. But you did not keep one day my commandment until I had finished the creation and blessed everything in it. Then I commanded you concerning the tree that you should not eat of it, Yet I knew that Satan who deceived himself would also deceive you. So I made known to you by means of the tree not to come near him, and I told you not to eat of the fruit of it, nor taste of it, nor yet sit under it, nor yield to it. Had I not been and spoken to you, O Adam, concerning the tree, and had I left you without a commandment, and you had sinned, it would have been an offense on my part for not having given you any order you would have turned around and blamed me for it. But I commanded you and warned you that you, and you did fall, that so that my creatures cannot blame me, but blame rests on them alone. And, O oh Adam, I have made the day for you and for your children after you, for them to work and toil in him. And I have made the night for them to rest in it from their work, and for the beasts of the field to go forth by night and seek their food. But little of darkness now remains, O Adam, and daylight will soon appear. Then Adam said to God, O Lord, take you my soul, and let me not see this gloom any more, or remove me to some place where there is no darkness. But the Lord God said to Adam, Truly I say to you, this darkness will pass from you. Every day I have determined for you, until the fulfillment of my covenant. When I shall save you and bring you back again into the garden, into the abode of light that you long for, wherein there is no darkness. I will bring you to it in the kingdom of heaven. Again God said to Adam, All this misery that you have, that you have been made to take upon yourself because of your transgression will not free you from the hand of Satan and will not save you, but I will. When I shall come down from heaven and shall be, become flesh of your seed, and take upon myself the infirmity which you suffer, and the darkness that come upon you in this cave shall come upon me in the grave, when I am in the flesh of your seed. And I, who am without years, shall be subject to the reckoning of years, of times, of months, and of days, and I shall be reckoned as one of the sons of men in order to save you. And God ceased to commune with Adam. Then Adam said, and Eve wept, and saw by reason of God's words to them, that they should not return to the garden until the fulfillment of the days decreed upon them, but mostly because God had told them that he should, not, should suffer for their salvation. After this, Adam and Eve did not cease to stand in the cave, praying and weeping, until the morning dawned upon them. And when they saw the light return to them, they restrained from fear and strengthened their hearts. And Adam began to come out of the cave, and when he came out of the mouth of it, and stood and turned his face towards the east, and saw the sun rise in the glowing rays, and felt the heat of it on his body, he was afraid of it, and thought in his heart that this flame come, had come forth to plague him. 
He then wept and beat upon his breast and fell upon the earth on his face and made his request, saying, O Lord, plague me not, neither consume me nor yet take away my life from the earth. For he thought that the Son was God. Inasmuch as while he was in the garden and heard the voice of God and the sound he made in the garden and feared him, Adam never saw the brilliant light of the sun, neither did the flaming heat of it touch his body. Therefore he was afraid of the sun when flaming rays of it reached him. He thought God meant to plague him with it all of the days he had decreed for him. For Adam also said in his thoughts, As God did not plague us with darkness, behold, he has caused us the, the sun to rise and to plague us with burning heat. But while he was thinking this in his heart, the word of God came to him and said, O Adam, arise and stand up. This sun is not God, but it has been created to give light by day, of which I spoke to you in the cave, saying that the dawn would break forth, and there would be light by day. But I am God who comforted you in the night, and God ceased to commune with Adam. Then Adam and Eve came out at the mouth of the cave and went towards the garden. But as they drew near to it, before the western gate from which Satan came when he deceived Adam and Eve, they found the serpent that became Satan coming at the gate and sorrowfully licking the dust and wriggling on his breast on the ground by reason of the curse that fell upon it from God. And whereas aforetime the serpent was the most exalted of all beasts, it was now changed and become slippery and the meanest of them all, and it crept on its breast and went on its belly. And whereas it was the fairest of all the beasts, it had been changed and was become the ugliest of them all. Instead of feeding on the best food, it now turned to eat the dust. Instead of dwelling as before in the best places, it now lived in the dust. And whereas it had been the most beautiful of all beasts, all of which stood dumb at its beauty, it was now abhorred of them. And again, whereas it dwelt in one beautiful abode to which all the other animals came from elsewhere, and where it drank, they drank also of the same. Now, after it had become venomous by reason of God's curse, all beasts fled from its abode, and would not drink of the water it drank, but fled from it. When the accursed serpent saw Adam and Eve, it swelled its head, stood on its tail, and with eyes blood red, did as if it would kill them. It made straight for Eve and ran after her, while Adam, standing by, wept, because he had no stick in his hand wherewith to smite the serpent, and knew not how to put it to death. But with a heart burning for Eve, Adam approached the serpent and held it by the tail. When it turned towards him and said to him, O oh Adam, because of you and of Eve I am slippery and go upon my belly. Then by reason of its great strength it threw down Adam and Eve and pressed upon them as if it would kill them. But God sent an angel who threw the serpent away from them and raised them up. Then the word of God came to the serpent and said to it, in the first instance I made you glib and made you to go upon your belly, but I did not deprive you of speech. Now, however, be you dumb and speak no more, you and your race, because in the first place has the ruin of my creatures happened through you, and now you wish to kill them. Then the serpent was struck dumb and spoke no more. And the wind came to blow from heaven by command of God that carried away the serpent from Adam and Eve, threw it on the seashore, and it landed in India. But Adam and Eve wept before God, and Adam said to him, O Lord, when I was in the cave, I said this to you, my Lord, that the beasts of the field would rise and devour me, and cut off my life from the earth. And then Adam, by reason of what had befallen him, beat upon his breast, and fell upon the earth like a corpse. And then came to him the word of God, who raised him and said to him, O oh Adam, not one of these beasts will be able to hurt you, because when I made the beasts and the other moving things come to you in the cave, I did not let the serpent come with them, lest it should rise against you, make you tremble, and the fear of it should fall into your hearts. For I knew that this accursed one is wicked, therefore I would not let it come near you with the other beasts. But now strengthen your heart and do not fear. I am with you unto the end of the days I have determined on you. Then Adam wept and said, O God, remove us to some other place, that the serpent may not come near us again, and rise against us, lest it find your handmaid Eve alone, and kill her, for its eyes are hideous and evil. But God said to Adam and Eve, 
Do not fear from now on. I will not let it come near you. I have driven it away from you, from this mountain. Neither will I leave it anything to hurt you. Then Adam and Eve worshipped before God and gave him thanks and praised him for having delivered them from death. Then Adam and Eve went in search of the garden, and the heat beat like a flame on their faces, and they sweated from the heat and wept before the Lord. But the place where they wept was near to a high mountain, facing the western gate of the garden. Then Adam threw himself down from the top of that mountain. His face was torn and his flesh was flayed. Much blood flowed from him, and he was near to death. Meanwhile, Eve remained standing on the mountain, weeping over him, thus lying. And she said, I wish not to live after him, for all that he did to himself was through me. Then she threw herself after him, and was torn and scotched by stones, and remained lying as dead. But the merciful God who looks upon his creatures looked upon Adam and Eve as they lay dead, and he sent his word to them and raised them, and said to Adam, O oh Adam, all this misery which you have brought upon yourself will not avail against my rule, neither will it alter the covenant to the five thousand five hundred years. Then Adam said to God, I wither in the heat, I am faint from walking, and I am loath of this world, and I know not when you will bring me out of it to rest. And then the Lord God said to him, O oh Adam, it cannot be at present, not until you have ended your days, then I shall bring you out of this wretched land. And Adam said to God, While I was in the garden, I knew neither heat, nor languor, nor, near, nor moving about, nor trembling, nor fear. But now, since I came to this land, all this affliction has come upon me. Then God said to Adam, So long as you were keeping my commandment, my light and my grace rested on you. But when you did transgress my commandment, sorrow and misery befell you in this land. And Adam wept and said, O Lord, do not cut me off for this, neither smite me with heavy plagues, nor yet repay me according to my sin. For we of our own will did transgress your commandment and forsake your law, and sought to become gods like you, when Satan the enemy deceived us. Then God said again to Adam, Because you have borne fear and trembling in this land, languor and suffering, treading and walking about, going upon this mountain and dying from it, I will take all this upon myself in order to save you. Then Adam wept more and said, O oh God, have mercy on me so far as to take upon you that which I will do. But God took his word from Adam and Eve. Then Adam and Eve stood on their feet, and Adam said to Eve, Gird yourself, and I also will gird myself. And she girded herself as Adam told her. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped from the face of the rock and the blood they had spilt. But that which had dropped on the sand they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled, and they offered upon the altar as an offering to God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus asking God, Forgive us our trespass and our sin, and look upon us with your eyes of mercy. For when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before you without ceasing. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, nor long discernment, nor upright feelings. Neither is our bright nature left us. But our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first when we were created. Yet now look upon our blood which is offered upon these stones and accept it at our hands like the praise we used to sing to you at first when in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests to God. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, looked upon Adam and Eve and upon their blood which they had offered up as an offering to him without an order from him in so doing. But he wondered at them and accepted their offerings, and God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, O oh Adam, as you have shed your blood, so I will shed my own blood when I become flesh of your seed. And as you did die, O oh Adam, so also I will die. And as you did build an altar, so also I will make for you an altar on the earth. 
And as you did offer up your blood upon it, so also I will offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as you did sue for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. And now, behold, I have accepted your offering, O Adam, but the days of the covenant wherein I have bound you are not fulfilled. When they are fulfilled, then I will bring you back into the garden. Now, therefore, strengthen your heart, and when sorrow comes upon you, make me an offering, and I will be favorable to you. But God knew that Adam had in his thoughts that he should often kill himself and make an offering of him of his blood. Therefore he said unto him, O Adam, do not again kill yourself as you did by throwing yourself down from that mountain. But Adam said to God, It was in my mind to put an end to myself at once for having transgressed your commandments and for my having come out of the beautiful garden and for the bright light of which you have deprived me and for the praises which poured up out of my mouth without ceasing, and for the light that covered me. Yet of your goodness, O God, do not take away with me altogether, but be favorable to me every time I die, and bring me to life, and thereby it will be made known that you are a merciful God, who does not will that one should perish, who loves not that one should fall and who do, does not condemn anyone cruelly, badly, and by whole destruction. Then Adam remained silent, and the word of God came to him, and blessed him, and comforted him, and covenanted with him, that he would save him at the end of the days determined upon him. This then was the first offering Adam made to God, and so it became his custom to do. Then Adam took Eve, and they began to return to the cave of treasures where they dwelt, and when they neared it, they saw it from afar. Heavy sorrow fell upon Adam and Eve when they looked at it. Then Adam said to Eve, When we were on the mountain, we were comforted by the word of God that conversed with us, and that light that came from the east shone over us. But now the word of God is hidden from us, and the light that shone over us is so changed as to disappear, and let darkness and sorrow come upon us. And we were forced to enter this cave, which is like a prison, wherein darkness covers us so that we are parted from each other, and you cannot see me, neither can I see you. And Adam had said, when Adam had said these words, they wept and spread their hands before God, for they were full of sorrow. And they asked God to bring the sun to them, to shine on them, so that darkness returns not upon them, and they come not again under this covering of rock, and they wish to die rather than to see the darkness. Then God looked upon Adam and Eve, and upon their great sorrow, and upon all that they had done with a fervent heart, and account, on account of all the trouble that they were in, instead of their former well-being, and on account of all the misery that came upon them in this strange land. Therefore God was not angry with them, nor impatient with them, but he was long-suffering and forbearing towards them, as towards the children he had created. Then came the word of God to Adam, and said unto him, Adam, as for the sun, if I were to take it and bring it to you, days, hours, years, and months would all come to nothing, and the covenant I have made with you would never be fulfilled. But you should then be turned and left in a long plague, and no salvation would be left for you forever. Yes, rather, bear along and calm your soul while you abide day and night, until the fulfillment of days and the time of my covenant is come. Then I shall come and save you, O Adam, for I do not wish that you be afflicted. And when I look at all the good things in which you did live, and why you came out of them, then I will willingly show you mercy. But I cannot alter the covenant that has gone out of my mouth, else I would have brought you back into the garden. When, however, the covenant is fulfilled, then shall I show you and your seed mercy, and bring you into a land of gladness, where there is neither sorrow nor suffering but lasting joy and gladness, and light that never fails, and praises that never stop, and a beautiful garden that shall never pass away. And God said again unto Adam, Be long-suffering, and enter the cave, for the darkness of which you were afraid shall only be twelve hours long, and when ended, light shall arise. Then, when Adam heard these words from God, and he and Eve worshipped before him, and their hearts were comforted, they returned into the cave after their custom, while tears flowed from their eyes. Sorrow and wailing came from their hearts, and they wished their soul would leave their body. 
And Adam and Eve stood praying until the darkness of night came upon them. And Adam was hid from Eve and she from him. And they remained standing in prayer. When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer and how God communed with him and he comforted them and how he had accepted their offering, Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his hosts. In his hands was a flashing fire and they were in a great light. He then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave because he did, could not enter into it by reason of their prayers. And he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve while his hosts began to sing praises. And Satan did this in order that Adam saw, when Adam saw the light, he would think within himself that it was a heavenly light, and that Satan's hosts were angels, and that God had sent them to watch the cave and to give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam also came out of the cave and saw them, and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam by it, and a second time humble him before God. When therefore Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, Look at that great light, and at those many songs of praise, and at that host standing outside that do not come in to us. Do not tell us what they say, or where they come from, or what is the meaning of this light, what those praises are, wherefore they have been sent to us, and why they do not come in. If they were from God, they would come to us in the cave and would tell us their errand. Then Adam stood up and prayed to God with a fervent heart and said, O oh Lord, is there in the world another God than you who created angels and filled them with light and sent them to keep us who would come with them? But lo, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are in a great light. They sing loud praises. If they are of some other God than you, tell me. And if they are sent by you, inform me of the reason for which you have sent them. No sooner had Adam said this than an angel from God appeared to them in the cave, who said to them, O oh Adam, fear not, this is Satan and his hosts. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in the serpent, but this time he has come to you in the similitude of an angel of light in order that when you worshipped him he might enthrall you in the very presence of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave and stripped him of the faint he had assumed and brought him into his own hideous form to Adam and Eve who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said to Adam, This hideous form has been ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in it Therefore he did transform himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his hosts from Adam and Eve, and he said to them, Do not fear, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel went from them. But Adam and Eve remained standing in the cave. No consolation came to them. They were divided in their thoughts. And when it was morning they prayed, and then went out to seek the garden, for their hearts were towards it and they could get no consolation for having left it. But when the wily Satan saw them, that they were going to the garden, he gathered together his host, and came in appearance of a cloud, intent on deceiving them. But when Adam and Eve saw him thus in a vision, they thought they were angels of God come to comfort them about their having left the garden, or to bring them back again to it. And Adam spread his hands to God, beseeching him to make him understand what they were. Then Satan, the hater of all good, said to Adam, O oh Adam, I am an angel of the great God, and behold the hosts that surround me. God has sent me and them to take you and bring you to the border of the garden northwards, to the shore of the clear sea, to bathe you and Eve in it, and to raise you to your former gladness, that you return again to the garden. These words sank into the heart of Adam and Eve. Yet God withheld his word from Adam and did not make him understand at once, but waited to see his strength, whether he would be overcome as Eve was in the garden, or whether he would prevail. Then Satan called to Adam and Eve and said, Behold, we go to the sea of water. And they began to go. And Adam and Eve followed them at some little distance. But when they came to the mountain to the north of the garden, a very high mountain, without any steps to the top of it, the devil drew near to Adam and Eve and made them go up to the top in reality and not in a vision, wishing as he did to throw them down and to kill them and wipe their name from the earth. 
so that this earth should remain to him and his hosts alone. But when the merciful God saw that Satan wished to kill Adam with his manifold devices, and saw that Adam was meek and without guile, God spake to Satan in a loud voice and cursed him. Then he and his hosts fled, and Adam and Eve remained standing on top of the mountain, where they saw below them the whole wide world, high above which they were. But they saw none of the hosts which anon were by them. They wept, both Adam and Eve, before God, and begged for forgiveness of him. Then the word came from God to Adam, and said to him, Know you, and understand concerning this Satan, that he seeks to deceive you, and your seed after you. And Adam wept before the Lord God, and begged, and entreated him to give him something from the garden, as a token to him, wherein to be comforted. And God looked upon Adam's thought, and sent the angel Michael as far as the sea that reaches to India, to take from there golden rods and bring them to Adam. This did God in his wisdom, in order that these golden rods, being with Adam in the cave, should shine forth with light in the night around him, and put an end to his fear in the darkness. Then the angel Michael went down by God's order, took golden rods as God had commanded him, and brought them to God. After these things, God commanded the angel Gabriel to go down to the garden and say to the cherub who kept it, Behold, God has commanded me to come into the garden and to take from there sweet-smelling incense and give it to Adam. Then the angel Gabriel went down by God's order to the garden and told the cherub as God had commanded him. The cherub then said, Well, and Gabriel went in and took the incense. Then God commanded his angel Raphael to go to the garden and speak to the cherub about some mirror and give it to Adam. And then the angel Raphael went down and told the cherub as God had commanded him, and the cherub said, Well, then Raphael went in and took the mirror. The golden rods were from the Indian Sea, where there are precious stones. The incense was from the eastern border of the garden, and the myrrh from the western border, whence bitterness came upon Adam. And the angels brought these three things to God by the tree of life in the garden. Then God said to the angels, Dip them in the spring of water, then take them and sprinkle their water over Adam and Eve, that they be a little comforted in their sorrow, and give them to Adam and Eve. And the angels did as God had commanded them, and they gave all those things to Adam and Eve on the top of the mountain upon which Satan had placed them when he sought to make an end of them. And when Adam saw the golden rods, the incense, and the mirror, he was rejoiced and wept because he thought that the gold was a token of the kingdom whence he had come, and the incense was a token of the bright light which had been taken from him, and that the mirror was a token of sorrow in which he was. After these things God said to Adam, You did ask me something of something from the garden to be comforted with it, and I have given you these three tokens as a consolation to you that you trust in me and in my covenant with you. For I will come and save you, and king shall bring me, when, I, when in the flesh, gold and incense and myrrh. Gold as a token of my kingdom, incense as a token of my divinity, and myrrh as a token of my suffering and of my death. But, O Adam, put these by you in the cave, the gold that it may shed light over you by night, the incense that you may smell its sweet savor, and the mirror to comfort you in your sorrow. When Adam heard these words from God, he worshipped before him. He and Eve worshipped him and gave him thanks, because he had dealt mercifully with them. Then God commanded the three angels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, each to bring what he had brought and to give it to Adam, and they did so, one by one. And God commanded Suriel and Salathiel to bear up Adam and Eve and to bring them down from the top of the high mountain and take them to the cave of treasures. There they laid the gold on the south side of the cave and the incense on the eastern side and the mirror on the western side. For the mouth of the cave was on the north side. The angels then comforted Adam and Eve and departed. The gold was seventy rods, the incense twelve pounds, and the mirror three pounds. These remained by Adam in the house of treasures, therefore it was called of concealment. But other interpreters say it was called the cave of treasures by reason of the bodies of righteous men that were in it. These three things did God give to Adam on the third day after he had come out of the garden, in token of the three days the Lord should remain in the heart of the earth. 
And these three things, as they continued with Adam in the cave, gave him light by night, and by day they gave him a little relief from his sorrow. And Adam and Eve remained in the cave of treasures until the seventh day. They neither ate of the fruit of the earth, nor drank water. And when it dawned on the eighth day, Adam said to Eve, O Eve, we prayed to God to give us somewhat of the garden, and he sent his angels who brought us what he had desi we had desired. But now arise, and let us go to the sea of water we saw at first, and let us stand in it, praying that God will again be favorable to us, and take us back to the garden, or give us something, or that he will give us comfort in some other land than this in which we are. Then Adam and Eve came out of the cave, went and stood on the border of the sea in which they had before thrown themselves, and Adam said to Eve, Come, go down into this place, and come not out of it until the end of thirty days, when I shall come to you, and pray to God with fervent heart and a sweet voice to forgive us, and I will go to another place and go down into it, and do like you. Then Eve went down into the water as Adam had commanded her, Adam also went down into the water, and they stood praying, and besought the Lord to forgive them their offense, and to restore them to their former state. And they stood in this way, praying, to the end of five and thirty days. But Satan, the hater of all good, sought them in the cave, but found them not, although he searched diligently for them. But he found them standing in the water, praying, and thought within himself, Adam and Eve are thus standing in the water, beseeching God to forgive them their transgression, and to restore them to their former estate, and to take them from under my hand. But I will deceive them, so that they shall come out of the water, and not fulfill their vow. Then the hater of all good went not to Adam, but he went to Eve, and took the form of an angel of God, praising and rejoicing, and said to her, Peace be unto you, be glad and rejoice, God is favorable to you. And he sent me to Adam. I have brought him the glad tidings of salvation and of his being filled with bright light as he was at first. And Adam in his joy for his restoration has sent me to you, that you come to me in order that I crown you with light like him. And he said to me, Speak unto Eve. If she does not come with you, tell her of the sign with which we were on the top of the mountain, how God sent his angels who took us and brought us to the cave of treasures, and laid the gold on the southern side, incense on the eastern side, and myrrh on the western side. Now come to him. When Eve heard these words from him, she rejoiced greatly, and thinking that Satan's appearance was real, she came out of the sea. He went before, and she followed him until they came to Adam. Then Satan hid himself from her, and she saw him no more. Then she came and stood before Adam, who was standing by the water and rejoicing in God's forgiveness. And as she called to him, he turned round, found her there, and wept when he saw her, and smote upon his breast, and from the bitterness of his grief he sank into the water. But God looked upon him, and upon his misery, and upon his being about to breathe his last. And the word of God came from heaven and raised him up out of the water and said to him, Go up the high bank to Eve. And when he came up to Eve, he said to her, Who said to you, Come hither? And she told him the discourse of the angel who had appeared to her and had given her a sign. But Adam grieved and gave her to know that it was Satan. He then took her and they both returned to the cave. These things happened to them the second time they went down to the water seven days after their coming out of the garden. They fasted in the water thirty-five days, altogether forty-two days since they had left the garden. And on the morning of the forty-third day they came out of the cave, sorrowful and weeping. Their bodies were lean and they were parched from hunger and thirst, from fasting and praying, and from their heavy sorrow on account of their transgression. And when they had come out of the cave they went up the mountain to the west side of the garden. There they stood and prayed and besought God to grant them forgiveness of their sins. And after their prayers, Adam began to entreat God, saying, O my Lord, my God, and O my Creator, you did command the four elements to be gathered together, and they were gathered together by your order. Then you spread your hand and did create me out of one element, that of the dust of the earth. And you did bring me into the garden at the third hour on a Friday, and you did inform me of it in the cave. Then at first I knew neither night nor day, for I had a bright nature, neither did the light in which I lived ever leave me to know night or day. Then again, O Lord, in that third hour in which you did create me, 
You brought me all the beasts and lions and ostriches and fowls of the air and all things that move in the earth, which you had created at the first hour before me of the Friday. And your will was that I should name them all, one by one, with a suitable name. But you gave me understanding and knowledge and a pure heart and a right mind from you that I should name them after your own mind, regarding the naming of them. O oh God, you made them obedient to me and ordered them that none of them break from my sway according to your commandment and the dominion which you have given me over them. But now they are all estranged from me. Then it was in that third hour of Friday in which you did create me and did command me concerning the tree to which I was neither to draw near nor to eat thereof. For you said in, uh, to me in the garden, When you eat of it, death shall you die. And if you had punished me as you said with my death, with death I should have died that very moment. Moreover, when you commanded me regarding the tree, I was neither to approach nor to eat of it. Eve was not with me. You had not yet created her. Neither had you yet taken her out of my side, nor had she yet heard this order from you. Then, at the end of the third hour of that Friday, O Lord, you did cause a slumber and a deep sleep to come over me. And I slept, and I was overwhelmed in sleep. Then you did draw a rib out of my side and created it after my own similitude and image. Then I awoke, and when I saw her and knew who she was, I said, This is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Henceforth she shall be called woman. It was of your good will, O God, that you brought a slumber and a sleep over me, and that you did forthwith bring Eve out of my side, until she was out, so that I did not see how she was made. Neither could I witness, O my Lord, how awful and great are your goodness and glory. And of your good will, O God, you made us both with bodies of a bright nature, and you made us two, one. And you gave us your grace, and did fill us with the praises of the Holy Spirit, that we should be neither hungry, nor thirsty, nor know what sorrow is, nor yet faintness of heart, neither suffering, fasting, nor weariness. But now, O God, since we transgressed your commandment and broke your law, you have brought us out into a strange land, and have caused suffering and faintness, hunger and thirst to come upon us. Now therefore, O God, we pray you, give us something to eat from the garden, to satisfy our hunger with it, and something wherewith to quench our thirst. For, be for behold, many days, O God, we have tasted nothing and drunk nothing, and our flesh is dried up, and our strength is wasted, and sleep is gone from our eyes, from faintness and weeping. Then, O God, we dare not gather anything of the fruit of the trees, for fear of you, for when we transgressed at first, you did spare us and did not make us die. But now we thought in our hearts, if we eat of the fruit of trees without God's order, he will destroy us this time and will wipe us off the face of the earth. And we, if we drink of the water without God's order, he will make an end of us and root us up at once. Now, therefore, O God, that I come unto this place with Eve, we beg you will give us of the fruit of the garden that we may be satisfied with it. For we desire the fruit that is on the earth, and of all else that we lack in it. Then God looked again upon Adam and his weeping and groaning, and the word of God came to him and said to him, O oh Adam, when you were in my garden, you knew neither eating nor drinking, neither faintness nor suffering, neither leanness of flesh nor change, neither did sleep depart from your eyes. But since you transgressed and came into this strange land, all these trials are come upon you. Then God commanded the cherub who kept the gate in the garden of, with the sword of fire in his hand to take some of the fruit of the fig tree and to give it to Adam. And the cherub obeyed and commanded the Lord God and went into the garden and brought two figs on two twigs, each fig hanging to its leaf. They were, they were from two of the trees among which Adam and Eve hid themselves when God went to walk in the garden. And the word of God came to Adam and Eve and said to them, Adam, Adam, where are you? And Adam answered, O oh God, here am I. When I heard the sound of you and your voice, I hid myself because I am naked. Then the cherub took the two figs and brought them to Adam and Eve. But he threw them to them from afar, for they might not come near the cherub by reason of their flesh. They could not come near the fire. At first, angels trembled at the presence of Adam and were afraid of him. But now Adam trembled before the angels and were, was afraid of them. Then Adam drew near and took one fig, and Eve also came in turn and took the other. And as they took them up in their hands, they looked at them and knew that they were from the trees among which they had hidden themselves. 
Then Adam said to Eve, See you not these fig trees and their leaves, with which we covered ourselves when we were stripped of our bright nature? But now we do not know what misery and suffering may come upon us from eating them. Now therefore, O Eve, let us restrain ourselves and not eat of them, you and I, and let us ask God to give us of the fruit of the tree of life. Thus did Adam and Eve restrain themselves and did not eat of these figs. But Adam began to pray to God and to beseech him to give him of the fruit of the tree of life, saying this, O God, when we transgressed your commandment at the sixth hour of Friday, we were stripped of the bright nature we had and did not continue in the garden after our transgression more than three hours. But on the evening you made us come out of it, O God. We transgressed against you one hour, and all these trials and sorrows have come upon us until this day. In those days together with this, the forty-third day, do not redeem that one hour in which we transgressed. O oh God, look upon us with an eye of pity, and do not requite us according to our transgression of your commandment in the presence of you. O oh God, give us of the fruit of the tree of life, that we may eat of it and live, and turn not to see these sufferings and other trouble in this earth. For you are God. When we transgressed your commandment, you made us come out of the garden and did send a cherub to keep the tree of life, lest we should eat of it and live, and know nothing of faintness after we transgressed. But now, O Lord, behold, we have endured all these days and have borne sufferings. Make these forty-three days an equivalent for the one hour in which we transgressed. After these things, the word of God came to Adam and said to him, O Adam, as to the fruit of the tree of life for which you asked, I will not give it to you now, but when the five thousand five hundred years are fulfilled, then will I give you the fruit of the tree of life, and you shall eat and live forever, you and Eve and your righteous seed. But these forty-three days cannot make amends for the hour in which you did transgress my commandment. O oh, Adam, I gave you to eat of the fig tree in which you did hide yourself. Go and eat of it, you and Eve. I will not deny your request, neither will I disappoint your hope. Therefore bear up unto the fulfillment of the covenant I made with you. And God withdrew his word from Adam. Then Adam returned to Eve and said to her, Arise, and take a fig for yourself, and I will take another, and let us go to our cave. Then Adam and Eve took each of a fig and went towards the cave. The time was about the setting of the sun, and their thoughts made them long to eat of the fruit. But Adam said to Eve, I am afraid to eat of this fig. I do not know what may come upon me from it. So Adam wept and stood praying before God, saying, Satisfy my hunger without my having to eat this fig. For after I have eaten it, what will it profit me? And what shall I desire to ask of you, O God, when it is gone? And he said again, I am afraid to eat of it, for I know not what will befall me through it. Then the word of God came to Adam and said to him, O oh, Adam, why had you not this dread, and neither this fasting nor this care before this? And why did you not have this fear before you did transgress? But when you came to dwell in this strange land, your animal body could not be on earth without earthly food to strengthen it and to restore its powers. And God withdrew his word from Adam. Then Adam took the fig and laid it on the golden rods. Eve also took her figs and put them on upon the incense. And the weight of each fig was upon the water, uh, that of a watermelon, for the fruit of the garden was much larger than the fruit of this land. But Adam and Eve remained standing and fasting in the whole of that night, until the morning dawned. When the sun rose, they were at their prayers, and Adam said to Eve, after they had done praying, O oh, Eve, come and let us go to the border of the garden looking south, to the place where the river flows and is parted into four heads. There we will pray to God and ask him to give us to drink of the water of life. For God has not fed us with the tree of life in order that we may not live. We will therefore ask him to give us of this water of life and to quench our thirst with it rather than with the drink of water of this land. When Eve heard these words from Adam, she agreed, and they both arose and came to the southern border of the garden, upon the brink of the river of water at some little distance from the garden. And they stood and prayed before the Lord and asked him to look upon them this once, to forgive them and to grant them their request. After this prayer from both of them, Adam began to pray with his voice before God and said, O Lord, when I was in the garden and saw the water that flowed from under the tree of life, my heart did not desire, neither did my body require to drink of it. 
Neither did I know thirst, for I was living, and above that which I am now. So that in order to live I did not require any food of life, neither did I drink of the water of life. But now, O God, I am dead. My flesh is parched with thirst. Give me of the water of life, that I may drink of it and live. Of your mercy, O God, save me from these plagues and trials, and bring me into another land different from this, if you will not let me dwell in your garden. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, O Adam, as to what you say, bring me into a land where there is rest. It is not another land than this, but it is the kingdom of heaven where alone there is rest. But you cannot make your entrance into it at present, but only after your judgment is passed and fulfilled. Then I will make you go up into the kingdom of heaven, you and your righteous seed, and I will give you and them the rest that you ask for at present. And if you say, Give me of the water of life that I may drink of it and live, it cannot be this day. But on the day that I shall descend into hell and break the gates of brass and bruise the pe in pieces the kingdoms of iron, then will I in mercy save your soul and the souls of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. And again, as regards the water of life, you seek it will not be granted to you this day. But on the day that I shall shed my blood upon your head in the land of Golgotha, for my blood shall be the water of life unto you at that time, and not to you alone, but unto all those of your seed who shall believe in me, that it be unto them a rest forever. The Lord said again to Adam, O Adam, when you were in the garden, these trials did not come upon you, but since you did transgress my commandment, all these sufferings have come upon you. Now also does your flesh require food and drink. Drink then of that water which that flows by you on the face of the earth. Then God withdrew his word from Adam. And Adam and Eve worshipped the Lord and returned from the river of water to the cave. It was noonday, and when they drew near to the cave, they saw a large fire by it. Then Adam and Eve were afraid and stood still. And Adam said to Eve, What is that fire by our cave? We do nothing in, in it to bring about this fire. We neither have bread to bake therein, nor broth to cook there. As to this fire we know not the like, neither do we know what to call it. But ever since God sent the cherub with a sword of fire that flashed and lightened in his hand, from fear of which we fell down and were like corpses, have we not seen the like? But now, O we behold, this is the same fire that was in the cherub's hand, which God had sent to keep in the cave in which we dwell. O Eve, it is because God is angry with us and will drive us from it. O Eve, we have again transgressed his commandment in the cave, so that he had sent his fire to burn around it, and to prevent us from going into it. If this be really so, O Eve, where shall we dwell, and whither shall we flee from before the face of the Lord? Since, as regards the garden, he will not let us live in it, and he has deprived us of the good things thereof. But he has placed us in this cave in which we have borne darkness trials and hardships, until the last we found comfort therein. But now that he has brought us out into another land, who knows what may happen in it, and who knows but that the darkness of that land may be far greater than the darkness of this land. Who knows what may happen in that land by day or by night, and who knows whether it will be far or near, O Eve? Where will it please God to put us, maybe far from the garden, O Eve, or where will God prevent us from beholding him, because we have transgressed his commandment, and because we have made requests to him at all times? O Eve, if God will bring us into a strange land other than this, in which we find consolation, it must be to put our souls to death, and to blot out our name from the face of the earth. O Eve, if we are farther estranged from the garden and from God, where shall we find him again, and ask him to give us gold, incense, myrrh, and some fruit of the fig tree? Where shall we find him to comfort us a second time? Where shall we find him that he may think of us as regards the covenant he has made on our behalf? Then Adam said no more, and they kept looking and at and he and Eve towards the cave, and at the fire that flared up around it. But that fire was from Satan, for he had gathered trees and dry grasses, and had carried and brought them to the cave, and had set fire to them in order to consume the cave and what was in it so that Adam and Eve should be left in sorrow, and he should cut off their trust in God and make them deny him. But by the mercy of God he could not burn the cave, 
For God sent his angel round the cave to guard it from such a fire until it went out. And this fire lasted from noonday until the break of day. That was the forty-fifth day. Yet Adam and Eve were standing and looking at the fire, and unable to come near the cave from their dread of the fire. And Satan kept on bringing trees and throwing them into his fire, until the flame of it rose up on high and covered the whole cave, thinking as he did in his own mind, to consume the cave with much fire. But the angel of the Lord was guarding it, and yet he could not curse Satan nor injure him by word, because he had no authority over him. Neither did he take to the doing so with words from his mouth. Therefore did the angel bear with him, without saying one bad word, until the word of God came, who said to Satan, Go from here. Once before you did deceive my servants, and this time you seek to destroy them. Were it not for my mercy, I would have destroyed you and your hosts from off the earth. But I have had patience with you until the end of the world. Then Satan fled from before the Lord. But the fire went on, burning around the cave like a coal fire the whole day, which was the forty-sixth day Adam and Eve had spent since they came out of the garden. And when Adam and Eve saw that the heat of the fire had somewhat cooled down, they began to walk towards the cave to get it as they were wont, but they could not by reason of the heat of the fire. Then they both took to weeping because of the fire that made separation between them and the cave, and that drew towards them, burning. And they were afraid. Then Adam said to Eve, See this fire of which we have a portion in us, which formerly yielded to us, but no longer does so, now that we have transgressed the limit of creation and changed our condition, and our nature is altered. But the fire is not changed in its nature, nor altered from its creation. Therefore it is now power over us, and when we came near it, it scorches our flesh. Then Adam rose and prayed to God, saying, See, this fire has made separation between us and the cave in which you could commanded us to dwell, but now, behold, we cannot go into it. Then God heard Adam and sent him his word and said, O oh Adam, see this fire, how different the flame and heat thereof are from the garden of delights and the good things in it. When you were under my control, all creatures yielded to you, but after you had transgressed my commandment, they will all rise over you. Again said God to him, See, O Adam, how Satan has exalted you. He has deprived you of the Godhead, and of an exalted state like unto me. And he has not kept his word to you, but, after all, has become your enemy. It is he who made this fire in which he meant to burn you and Eve. Why, O Adam, has he not kept his agreement with you? Not even one day, but has deprived you of the glory that was on you, when you did yield to his command. Do you think, Adam, that he loved you when he made this agreement with you, or that he loved you and wished to raise you on high? But no, Adam, he did not do all that out of love to you, but he wished to make you come out of light into darkness, and from an exalted state to a de degradation, from glory to abasement, from joy to sorrow, and from rest to fasting and fainting. God said also to Adam, See this fire kindled by Satan around your cave? See this wonder that surrounds you, and know that it will encompass about you, both you and your seed, when you hearken to his behest, that he will plague you with fire, and that you shall go down into hell after you are dead. And then you shall see the burning of his fire, that will in this way be burning around you and your seed. There shall be no deliverance from it for you, but at my coming, in like manner, as you cannot now go into your cave by reason of the great fire around it, not until my word shall come that will make a way for you on the day of my covenant is fulfilled. There is no way for you at present to come from there to rest, not until my word comes who is my word. Then he will make a way for you, and you shall have rest. Then God called with his word to the fire which burned around the cave, that it part itself asunder until Adam had gone through it. Then the fire parted itself by God's order, and a way was made for Adam. And God withdrew his word from Adam. Then Adam and Eve began again to come into the cave, and when they came to the way between the fire, Satan blew into the fire like a whirlwind, and made on Adam and Eve a burning coal fire, so that their bodies were singed, and the coal fire scorched them. And from the burning of the fire, Adam and Eve cried aloud and said, O Lord, save us! 
Leave us not to be consumed and plagued by this burning fire. Neither require us for having require us for having transgressed your commandment. And God looked upon their bodies on which Satan had caused fire to burn, and God sent his angel that stayed the burning fire. But the wounds remained on their bodies. And God said to Adam, See Satan's love for you, who pretended to give you the Godhead and greatness, and behold, he burns you with fire and seeks to destroy you from off the earth. Then look at me, O Adam, I created you, and how many times have I delivered you out of his hand? If not, he would have destroyed you. God said again to Eve, What is it that he promised you in the garden, saying, At the time you shall eat of this tree, your eyes will be opened, and you shall become like gods, knowing good and evil. But lo, lo, he has burnt your bodies with fire, and has made you taste the taste of fire for the taste of the garden, and has made you see the burning of fire, and the evil thereof, and the power it has over you. Your eyes have seen the good he has taken from you, and in truth he has opened your eyes, and you have seen the garden in which you were with me, and you have also seen the evil that has come upon you from Satan. But as to the Godhead, he cannot give it to you, neither fulfill his speech to you. Nay, he was bitter against you and your seed that will come after you. And God withdrew his word from them. Then Adam and Eve came into the garden, yet trembling at the fire that had scorched their bodies. So Adam said to Eve, Lo, the fire has burnt our flesh in this world, but how will it be when we are dead, and Satan shall punish our souls? Is not our deliverance long and far off, unless God come and in mercy to us fulfill his promise? Then Adam and Eve passed into the cave, blessing themselves for coming into it once more. For it was in their thoughts that they should never enter into it, that they, when they saw the fire around it. But as the sun was setting, the fire was still burning, and nearing Adam and Eve in the cave, so that they could not sleep in it. After the sun had set, they went out of it. This was the forty-seventh day after they came out of the garden. Adam and Eve then came under the top of the hill by the garden to sleep, as they were wont. And they stood and prayed God to forgive them their sins, and then fell asleep under the summit of the mountain. But, but Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, Whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardships that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardships, nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. The earth shall be rid of him, and I shall be le it shall be left to me alone, so that when he is dead, he may not have any seed left to inherit the kingdom that shall remain my own realm. God will then in want of me, and he will restore me to it with my hosts. After this, Satan called to the hosts, all of which came to him and said unto him, O oh, our Lord, what will you do? He then said to them, you know that this Adam whom God created out of the dust is he who has taken our kingdom. Come, let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and at Eve, and crush them under it. When Satan's hosts heard these words, they came to the part of the mountain where Adam and Eve were asleep. Then Satan and his hosts took a huge rock, broad and even, and without blemish, thinking within himself, If there should be a hole in the rock, when it fell on them, the hole in the rock might come upon them, so that they would escape and not die. He then said to his hosts, Take up this stone and throw it flat upon them, so that it roll not from them to somewhere else. And when you have hurled it, flee and do not tarry. And they did as he bid them. But as the rock fell down from the mountain upon Adam and Eve, God commanded it to become a kind of shed over them, that it did them no harm. And so it was by God's order. But when the rock fell, the whole earth quaked with it, and was shaken from the size of the rock. And as it quaked and shook, Adam and Eve awoke from sleep, and found themselves under a rock like a shed. But they did not know how it was. For when they fell asleep, they were under the sky, and not under a shed. And when they saw it, they were afraid. But then Adam said to Eve, Why has the mountain bent itself, and the earth quaked and shaken on our account? And why has this rock spread itself over us like a tent? Does God intend to plague us and to shut us up in this prison, or will he close the earth upon us? He is angry with us for our having come out of the cave without his order, 
and for our coming having done so out of our own accord without consulting him when we left the cave and came to this place. Then Eve said, If indeed the earthquake for our sake and this rock forms a tent over us because of our transgression, then woe be to us, O Adam, for our punishment will be long. But arise and pray to God to let us know concerning this and what this rock is that is spread over us like a tent. Then Adam stood up and prayed before the Lord to let him know about this strait. And Adam thus stood praying until the morning. Then the word of God came and said, O Adam, who counseled you when you came out of the cave and to come into this place? And Adam said to God, O Lord, we came to this place because of the heat of the fire that came upon us inside the cave. Then the Lord said to Adam, O Adam, you dreaded the heat of the fire for one night, but how will it be when you dwell in hell? Yet, O Adam, fear not, neither say in your heart that I have spread this rock as an awning over you to plague you with it. It came from Satan who had promised you the Godhead and majesty. It is he who threw down this rock to kill you under it and Eve with you, and thus to prevent you from living upon the earth. But in mercy for you, just as the rock was falling down upon you, I commanded it to form an awning over you, and the rock under you to lower itself. And this sign, O Adam, will happen to me at my coming upon the earth. Satan will raise the people of the Jews to put me to death, and they will lay me on in a rock and seal a large stone upon me, and I shall remain within that rock three days and three nights. But on the third day I shall rise again, and it shall be salvation to you, O Adam, and to your seed, to believe in me. But, O Adam, I will not bring you from under this rock until three days and three nights are past. And God withdrew his word from Adam. But Adam and Eve abode under the rock three days and three nights, as God had told them. And God did so to them, because they had left their cave and had come to this same place without God's order. But after three days and three nights, God opened the rock and brought them out from under it. Their flesh was dried up, and their eyes and their hearts were troubled from weeping and sorrow. Then Adam and Eve went forth and came into the cave of treasures, and they stood praying in it the whole of that day until the evening. And this took place at the end of fifty days after they had left the garden. But Adam and Eve rose again and prayed to God in the cave the whole of that night, and begged for mercy from him. And when the day dawned, Adam said to Eve, Come, let us go and do some work for our bodies. So they went out of the cave and came to the northern border of the garden, and they sought something to cover their bodies withal. But they found nothing and knew not how to do the work. Yet their bodies were stained, and they were speechless from cold and heat. Then Adam stood and asked God to show him something wherewith to cover their bodies. Then came the word of God and said to them, O Adam, take Eve and come to the seashore, where ye fasted before. There you shall find the skins of sheep, whose flesh was devoured by lions, and whose skins were left. Take them, and make raiment for yourselves, and clothe yourselves withal. When Adam heard these words from God, he took Eve and removed from the northern end of the garden to the south of it, by the river of water, where they once fasted. But as they were going in the way, and before they reached that place, Satan, the wicked one, had heard the word of God communing with Adam respecting his covering. It grieved him, and he hastened to the place where the sheepskins were, with the intention of taking them and throwing them into the sea, or of burning them with fire, that Adam and Eve should not find them. But as he was about to take them, the word of God came from heaven and bound him by the side of those skins until Adam and Eve came near him. But as they neared him, they were afraid of him and his hideous look. Then came the word of God to Adam and Eve and said to them, This is he who was hidden in the serpent, and who deceived you and stripped you of the garment of light and glory in which you were. This is he who promised you majesty and divinity. Where then is the beauty that was on him? Where is the divinity? Where is his light? Where is the glory that rested on him? Now his figure is hideous and is become abominable among angels, and he has come to be called Satan. O oh, Adam, he wished to take from you this earthly garment of sheepskins and to destroy it, and will not let you be covered with it. What then is his beauty that you should have followed him? And what have you gained by hearkening to him? See his evil works, and then look at me, at me, your creator, and at the good deeds that I do to you. 
See, I bound him until you came and saw him and beheld his weakness, that no power is left with him. And God released him from his bonds. After this, Adam and Eve said no more, but wept before God on account of their creation and of their bodies that required an earthly covering. Then Adam said to Eve, O Eve, this is the skin of beasts with which we shall be covered. But when we have put it on, behold, the token of death shall have come upon us, inasmuch as the owners of these skins have died and have wasted away. So also we shall die and pass away. And then Adam and Eve took the skins and went back to the cave of treasures. And when in it, they stood and prayed as they were wont. And they thought how they could make garments of those skins, for they had no skill for it. Then God sent to them his angel to show them how to work it out. And the angel said to Adam, Go forth and bring some palm thorns. Then Adam went out and brought some, as the angel had commanded him. Then the angel began before them to work out the skins after the manner of one who prepares his shirt. And he took the thorns and stuck them into the skins before their eyes. Then the angel again stood up and prayed God that the thorns in those skins should be hidden, so as to be, as it were, sewn with one thread. And so it was by God's order they, began, they became garments for Adam and Eve, and he clothed them withal. From that time the nakedness of their bodies was covered from the sight of each other's eyes. And this happened at the end of the fifty-first day. Then when Adam's and Eve's bodies were covered, they stood and prayed and sought mercy of the Lord and forgiveness, and gave him thanks for that he had, had mercy on them, and he had covered their nakedness, and they ceased not from prayer the whole of that night. Then when the morning dawned at the rising of the sun, they said their prayers after their custom, and then went out of the cave. And Adam said to Eve, Since we do not know what there is into the western, western side of this cave, let us go there and see it today. Then they came forth and went towards the western border. They were not very far from the cave when Satan came towards them and hid himself between them and the cave under the form of two ravenous lions three days without food that came towards Adam and Eve as if to break them in pieces and devour them. Then Adam and Eve wept and prayed to God to deliver them from their paws. Then the word of God came to them and drove away the lions from them. And God said to Adam, O oh Adam, what do you seek on the western border, and why have you left your own accord the eastern border in which you was your dwelling place? Now then, turn back to your cave and remain in it, that Satan does not deceive you, nor work his purpose upon you. For in this western border, O oh Adam, there will go forth from you a seed that shall replenish it, and that will defile themselves with their sins and with their yielding to the beasts of Satan, and by following his works. Therefore will I bring upon them the waters of a flood, and will overwhelm them all. But I will deliver what is left of the righteous among them, and I will bring them to a distant land, and the land in which you dwell now shall remain desolate, and without one inhabitant in it. After God had thus discoursed to them, they went back to the cave of treasures. But their flesh was dried up, and their strength failed from fasting and praying, and from the sorrow they felt at having trespassed against God. Then Adam and Eve stood up in the cave and prayed the whole of that night until the morning dawned. And when the sun was risen, they both went out of the cave, their heads wandering from heaviness of sorrow, and they not knowing whether they, they went. And they walked thus into the southern border of the garden, and they began to go up to that border until they came to the eastern border beyond which there was no farther space. And the cherub who guarded the garden was standing at the western gate and guarding it against Adam and Eve, lest they should suddenly come into the garden. And the cherub turned round as if to put them to death according to the commandment God had given him. When Adam and Eve came to the eastern border of the garden, thinking in their hearts that the cherub was not watching, as they were standing by the gate as if wishing to go in, suddenly came the cherub with a flashing sword of fire in his hand. And when they saw him, they went forth to kill them. For he was afraid lest God should destroy him if they went into the garden without his order. And the sword of the cherub seemed to flame afar off. But when he raised it over Adam and Eve, the flame of it did not flash forth. Therefore did the cherub think that God was favorable to them and was bringing them back into the garden, and the cherub stood wondering. He could not go up to heaven to ascertain God's order regarding their getting into the garden. He therefore abode standing by them, unable as he was to part from them, 
for he was afraid lest they should enter the garden without leave from God, who then would destroy him. When Adam and Eve saw the cherub coming towards them with a flaming sword of fire in his hand, they fell on their faces from fear and were as dead. At that time the heavens and the earth shook, and other cherubim came down from heaven to the cherub who guarded the garden and saw him amazed and silent. Then again other angels came down near to the place where Adam and Eve were, and they divided between joy and sorrow. They were glad because they thought that God was favorable to Adam and wished him to return to the garden and wished to restore him to the gladness he once enjoyed. But they sorrowed over Adam because he was fallen like a dead man, he and Eve, and they said in their thoughts, Adam has not died in this place, but God has put him to death for his having come to this place and wishing to get into the garden without his leave. Then came the word of God to Adam and Eve and raised them from their dead state, saying to them, Why do you come up hither? Do you intend to go into the garden from which I brought you out? It cannot not be today, but only when the covenant I have made with you is fulfilled. Then Adam, when he heard the word of God and the fluttering of the angels whom he did not see, but only heard the sound of them with his ears, he and Eve wept and said to the angels, O spirits who wait upon God, look upon me and upon my being unable to see you. For when I was in my former bright nature, then I could see you. I sang praises as you do, and my heart was far above you. But now that I have transgressed, that bright nature is gone from me, and I am come to this miserable state. And now I am come to this, that I cannot see you, and you do not serve me as you were wont, for I am become animal flesh. Yet now, O angels of God, ask God with me to restore me to that wherein I was formerly, to rescue me from this misery, and to remove from me the sentence of death he passed upon me for having trespassed against him. Then, when the angels heard these words, they all grieved over him, and cursed Satan who had beguiled Adam, until he came from the garden to misery, from life to death, from peace to trouble, and from gladness to a strange land. Then the angels said to Adam, You did hearken to Satan, and did forsake the word of God who created you, and you did believe that Satan would fulfill all that he had promised you. But now, O oh Adam, we will make known to you what came upon us through him before his fall from heaven. He gathered together his hosts and deceived them, promising to give them a great kingdom and a divine nature, and other promises he made to them. His hosts believed that his word was true, so they yielded to him and renounced the glory of God. He then sent for us according to the orders in which we were to come under his command and to hearken to his vain promise. But we would not, and we took not his advice. Then, then after he had fought with God and had dealt forwardly with him, he gathered together his hosts and made war with us. And if it had not been for God's strength that was with us, we could not have prevailed against him to hurl him from heaven. But when he fell from among us, there was great joy in heaven because of his going down from us. For he had, had he continued in heaven, nothing, not even one angel, would have remained in it. But God in his mercy drove him from among us to this dark earth, for he had become darkness itself, and a worker of unrighteousness. And he has continued, O Adam, to make war against you, until he beguiled you and made you come out of the garden to this strange land, where all these trials had come, come to you, and death which God brought upon you, him has he also brought upon you, O Adam, because you did obey him and did transgress against God. Then all the angels rejoiced and praised God and asked him not to destroy Adam this time for his having sought to enter the garden, but to bear with him until the fulfillment of the promise and to help him in this world until he was free from Satan's hand. Then came the word of God to Adam and said to him, O oh Adam, look at that garden of joy and this earth of toil, and behold the angels who are in the garden that is full of them, and see yourself alone on this earth with Satan whom you did obey. Yet if you had submitted and been obedient to me and had kept my word, you would have you would have been with me and my angels in my garden. But when you did transgress and hearken to Satan, you did become his guest among his angels that are full of wickedness, and you came to this earth that brings forth to you thorns and thistles. O oh Adam, ask him who deceived you to give you the divine nature he promised you, or to make you as a, uh, a garden as I made for you, or to fill you with that same bright nature with 
which I have built you. Ask him to make a body like the one I made you, or to give you a day of rest as I gave you, or create within you a reasonable soul as I did create for you, or to remove you from this to some other earth than the one which I gave you. But, O oh Adam, he will not fulfill even one of the things he told you. Acknowledge then my favor towards you, and my mercy on you, my creature, that I have not requited thee for your transgression against me, but in my pity for you I have promised you that at the end of the great five days and a half I will come and save you. And then God said again to Adam and Eve, Arise, go down from here, lest the cherub with a sword of fire in his hand destroy you. But Adam's heart was comforted by God's words to him, and he worshipped before him. And God commanded his angels to escort Adam and Eve to the cave with joy, instead of the fear that had come upon them. Then the angels took up Adam and Eve, and brought them down from the mountain by the garden with songs and psalms, until they brought them to the cave. There the angels began to comfort and to strengthen them, and then departed from them towards heaven, to their Creator who had sent them. But after the angels were gone from Adam and Eve, came Satan with shamefacedness and stood at the entrance of the cave in which were Adam and Eve. He then called to Adam and said, O oh Adam, come, let me speak to you. Then Adam came out of his cave, thinking that he was one of God's angels that was come to give him good counsel. But when Adam came out and saw his hideous figure, he was afraid of him and said to him, Who are you? Then Satan answered and said to him, it is I who hid myself within the serpent, and who talked to Eve and beguiled her until she hearkened to my command. I am he who sent her through the wiles of my speech to deceive you until you and she ate of the fruit of the tree, and you came away from under the command of God. But when Adam heard these words from him, he said to him, Can you make me a garden as God made for me, or can you clothe me in the same bright nature in which God had clothed me? Where is the divine nature that you promised to give me? Where is that fair speech of yours you did hold with us at first when we were in the garden? Then Satan said to Adam, Do you think that when I have spoken to one about anything, I shall ever bring it to him or fulfill my word? Not so, for I myself have never even thought of obtaining what I asked. Therefore I did fall and did make you fall for that which I myself fell. And with you also, whoever accepts my counsel falls thereby. But now, O oh Adam, by reason of your fall, you are under my rule, and I am king over you, because you listen to me and have transgressed against God. Neither will there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised you by your God. Again he said, Inasmuch as we do not know the day agreed upon by, with you by God, nor the hour in which you shall be delivered, for that reason we will multiply war and murder upon you and your seed after you. This is our will and our good pleasure that we may not leave one of the sons of men to inherit our orders of heaven. For as to our abode, O Adam, it is in burning fire, and we will not cease our evil doing. No, not one day, nor one hour. And I, O Adam, shall sow fire upon you when you come out into the, uh, into the cave and dwell there. When Adam heard these words, he wept and mourned and said to Eve, Hear what he said, that he will not fulfill anything of what he told you in the garden. Did he really then become king over us? But we will ask God who created us to deliver us out of his hands. Then Adam and Eve spread their hands to God, praying and entreating him to drive Satan away from them, that he do them no violence and do not force them to deny God. Then God sent to them at once his angel who drove away Satan from them. This happened about sunset on the fifty-third day after they had come out of the garden. Then Adam and Eve went into the cave and stood up and turned their faces to the earth to pray to God. But before they prayed, Adam said to Eve, Lo, you have seen what temptations have befallen us in this land. Come, let us arise and ask God to forgive us the sins we have committed, and we will not come out until the end of the day, the next to the fortieth. And if we die herein, he will save us. Then Adam and Eve arose and joined together in entreating God. They stayed thus praying in the cave. Neither did they come out of it by night or by day until their prayers went up out of their mouths like a flame of fire. But Satan, the hater of all good, did not allow them to end their prayers, for he called to his hosts, and they came, all of them. He then said to them, 
Since Adam and Eve, whom we beguiled, have agreed together to pray to God night and day, and to entreat him to deliver them, and since they will not come out of the cave until the end of the fortieth day, and since they will continue their prayers as they have both agreed to do, that he will deliver them out of our hands and restore them to their former state, see what we shall do to them. And his host said to him, Power is yours, O our Lord, to do what you want. Then Satan, in great wickedness, took his hosts and came into the cave in the thirtieth night of the forty days, and won. And he smote Adam and Eve until he left them dead. Then came the word of God to Adam and Eve, who raised them from their suffering. And God said to Adam, Be strong, and do not be afraid of him who has just come to you. But Adam wept and said, Where were you, O my God, that they should smite me with such blows? and that this suffering should come upon us, upon me, and upon Eve, your handmaid. Then God said to him, O Adam, see, he is Lord and Master of all you have, he who said he would give you divinity. Where is this love for you, and where is the gift he promised? For once it has pleased him, O Adam, to come to you, to comfort you, and to strengthen you, and to rejoice with you, and to send his host to guard you, because you have hearkened to him and have yielded to his counsel, and have transgressed my commandment, but has followed his behest? Then Adam wept before the Lord and said, O Lord, because I transgressed a little, you have sorely plagued me in return for it. I ask you to deliver me out of his hands, or else have pity on me, and take my soul out of my body, now in this strange land. Then God said to Adam, If only there had been this sighing and praying before you did transgress. Then you would have had rest from the trouble in which you are now in. But God had patience with Adam, and let him and Eve remain in the cave until they had fulfilled the forty days. But as to Adam and Eve, their strength and flesh withered from fasting and praying, from hunger and thirst, for they had not tasted either food or drink since they left the garden, nor were the functions of their bodies yet settled, and they had no strength left to continue in prayer from hunger until the end of the next day to the fortieth. They were fallen down in the cave, yet what speech escaped from their mouth was only in praises. Then on the eighty-ninth day Satan came to the cave, clad in a garment of light, and girt about with a bright girdle. In his hands was a staff of light, and he looked most awful, but his face was pleasant and his speech was sweet. He thus transformed himself in order to deceive Adam and Eve, and to make them come out of the cave before they had fulfilled their forty days. For he said within himself, Now that when they have fulfilled the forty days fasting and praying, God would restore them to their former estate. But if he did not do so, he would still be favorable to them. And even if he had not had mercy on them, he would have yet given something from the garden to comfort them, as already twice before. Then Satan drew near the cave in his fair appearance and said, O Adam, rise up, stand, you and Eve, and come along with me to a good land, and fear not. I am flesh and bones like you, and at first I was a creature that God created. And it was so that when he had created me, he placed me in a garden in the north, on the border of the world. And he said to me, Stay here. And I stayed there according to his word, neither did I transgress his commandment. Then he made a slumber to come over me, and he brought you, O Adam, out of my side, but did not make you stay by me. But God took you in his divine hand and placed you in a garden to the eastward. Then I grieved because of you, for that while God had taken you out of my side, he had not let you live with me. But God said to me, Grieve not because of Adam, whom I brought out of your side. No harm will come to him, for I have now brought him out of his side a help meet for him. For I have given him joy by so doing. Then Satan said again, I did not know it as ye are in this cave, nor anything about this trial that has come upon you, until God said to me, Behold, Adam has transgressed, he whom I had taken out of your side, and Eve also whom I took out of his side, and I have driven them out of the garden. I have made them dwell in a land of sorrow and misery, because they transgressed against me, and have hearkened to Satan. And lo, they are in suffering unto this day, the eightieth. Then God said to me, Arise, and go to them, and make them come to your place, and suffer not that Satan come near them, and afflict them. For they are now in great misery, and lie helpless from hunger. He further said to me, 
When you have taken them to yourself, give them to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, and give them to drink of the water of peace, and clothe them in a garment of light, and restore them to their former state of grace, and leave them not in misery, for they came from you. But grieve not over them, nor repent that which has come upon them. But when I heard this, I was sorry, and my heart could not patiently patiently bear it for your sake, O my child. But, O Adam, when I heard the name of Satan, I was afraid, and I said within myself, I will not come out, lest he ensnare me, as he did my children, Adam and Eve. Then I said, O God, when I go to my children, Satan will meet me in the way, and war against me, as he did against them. Then God said to me, Do not fear when you find him. Smite him with the staff that is in your hand, and be not afraid of him. For you are of old standing, and he shall not prevail against you. Then I said, O oh my Lord, I am old and cannot go. Send your angels to bring them. But God said to me, Angels truly are not like them, and they will not consent to come with them. But I have chosen you, because they are your offspring, and like you, they will listen to what you say. God said further to me, If you do not have strength to walk, I will send a cloud to carry you, and alight you at the entrance of their cave. Then the cloud will return and leave you there. And if they will come with you, I will send a cloud to carry you and them. Then he commanded a cloud, and it took me up and brought me to you, and then went back. And now, O oh my children, Adam and Eve, look at my hoary hairs, and at my feeble estate, and at my coming from that distant place. Come, come with me to a place of rest. And he began to weep and to sob before Adam and Eve, and his tears poured upon the earth like water. And when Adam and Eve raised their eyes and saw his beard and heard his sweet talk, and their hearts softened towards him, they listened to him, for they believed he was true. And it seemed to them that they really were his offspring, when they saw that his face was like their own, and they trusted him. Then he took Adam and Eve by the hand and began to bring them out of the cave. But when they were come a little way out of it, God knew that Satan had overcome them and had brought them there before the forty days were ended to take them to some distant place and to destroy them. And then the word of the Lord God came and cursed Satan and drove him away from them. And God began to speak to Adam and Eve, saying to them, What made you come out of the cave to this place? And then Adam said to God, Did you create a man before us? For when we were in the cave, there suddenly came to us a good old man who said to us, I am a messenger from God to you, to bring you back to some place of rest. And we did believe, O God, that he was a messenger from you. And we came out with him, and we did not whether, know whether we should go with him. And God said to Adam, See, that is the father of evil arts, who brought you and Eve out of the garden of delights. And now, indeed, when he saw that you and Eve both joined together in fasting and praying, and that you did not come out of the cave before the end of the forty days, he wished to make your purpose vain, to break your mutual bond, to cut off all hope from you, and to drive you to some place where he might destroy you, because he was unable to do anything with you, unless he showed himself in the likeness of you. Therefore did he come to you with a face like your own, and began to give you tokens as if they were all true. But I in mercy and with the favor I had to you did not allow him to destroy you, but I drove him away from you. Now therefore, O Adam, take Eve and return to your cave and remain in it until the morrow of the fortieth day. And when you go, come out, go towards the eastern gate of the garden. Then Adam and Eve worshipped God and praised and blessed him for the deliverance that had come to them from him. And they returned towards the cave. This happened at the evening of the thirty-ninth day. Then Adam and Eve stood up, and with great zeal prayed to God to be brought out of their want for strength. For their strength had departed from them, through hunger and thirst and prayer. But they watched the whole of that night, praying until morning. Then Adam said to Eve, Rise up, let us go towards the eastern gate of the garden as God told us. And they said their prayers as they were wont to do every day. And they went out of the cave to go near the eastern gate of the garden. Then Adam and Eve stood up and prayed, and besought God to strengthen them, and to send them something to satisfy their hunger. But when they had ended their prayers, they remained where they were by reason of their failing strength. Then came the word of God again, and said to them, O Adam, rise, and go and bring hither two figs. Then Adam and Eve arose, and they went until they drew near to the cave. 
But Satan, the wicked, was envious because of the consolation God had given them. So he prevented them and went to the cave and took the two figs and buried them outside the cave so that Adam and Eve should not find them. He also had in his thoughts to destroy them. But by God's mercy, as soon as those two figs were in the earth, God defeated Satan's counsel regarding them and made them into two fruit trees that overshadowed the cave. For Satan had buried them on the eastern side of it. Then when the two trees were grown and were covered with fruit, Satan grieved and mourned and said, Better were it to have left those figs as they were, for now, behold, they have become two fruit trees, whereof Adam will eat all the days of his life. Whereas I had in mind when I buried them to destroy them entirely and to hide them for ever. But God has overturned my counsel and would not that this sacred fruit should perish. And he has made plain my intention and has defeated the counsel I had formed against his servants. Then Satan went away ashamed of not having wrought out his design. But Adam and Eve, as they drew near to the cave, saw two fig trees covered with fruit and overshadowing the cave. Then Adam said to Eve, It seems to me that we have gone astray. When did these two trees grow here? It seems to me that the enemy wishes to lead us astray. Do you say that there is in the earth another cave than this? Yet, O oh Eve, let us go into the cave and find in it the two figs, for this is our cave in which we were. But if we would should not find the two figs in it, then it cannot be our cave. Then they went into the cave and looked into the four corners of it, but did not find the two figs. And Adam wept and said to Eve, Are we come to a wrong cave then, O Eve? It seems to me that these two fig trees are the two figs that were in the cave. And Eve said, I, for my part, do not know. Then Adam stood up and prayed and said, O oh God, you did command us to come back to the cave to take the two figs, and then to return to you. But now we have not found them. O oh God, you have taken them, and sown these two trees, or we have gone astray in the earth, or has the enemy deceived us? If it be real then, O oh God, reveal, us to, reveal to us the secret of these two trees, and of the two figs. Then the word of God came to Adam, and said to him, O oh Adam, when I sent you to fetch the figs, Satan went before you to the cave took the figs and buried them outside, eastward of the cave, thinking to destroy them and not sowing them with good intent. Not for his mere sake, then, have these trees grown up at once, but I had mercy on you and I commanded them to grow, and they grew to be two large trees, that you be overshadowed by their branches and find rest, and that I made you see my power and my marvelous works, and also to show you Satan's meanness and his evil works. Forever since he came out of the garden, he has not ceased. No, not one day from doing you some harm. But I have not given him power over you. And God said, Henceforth, O Adam, rejoice on account of the trees, you and Eve, and rest under them when you feel weary. But do not eat of their fruit, nor come near them. And then Adam wept and said, O oh God, will you again kill us, or will you drive us away from before your face, and cut our life from off the face of the earth? O oh God, I beseech you, if you know that there is in these trees either death or some other evil as at the first time, root them up there near our cave, and wither them, and leave us to die of the heat, of hunger, and of thirst. For we know your marvelous works, O oh God, that they are great, and that by your power you can bring one thing out of another, without one's wish. For your power can make rocks to become trees, and trees to become rocks. Then God looked upon Adam, and upon the strength of his mind, upon his endurance of hunger and thirst, and of the heat. And he changed the two fig trees into two figs, as they were at the first. And then said to Adam and Eve, Each of you may take one fig. And they took them, as the Lord commanded them. And he said to them, Go you into the cave, and eat the figs, and satisfy your hunger, unless, unless you die. So, as God commanded them, they went into the cave about the same time when the sun was setting. And Adam and Eve stood up and prayed at the time of the setting sun. But then they sat down to eat the figs, but they did not know how to eat them, for they were not accustomed to eat earthly food. They feared also lest if they ate, their stomach should be burdened and their flesh thickened and their hearts take to liking earthly food. But while they were seated in this way, God out of pity for them sent them his angel lest they should perish of hunger and thirst. And the angel said to Adam and Eve, 
God says to you that you have not strength to fast until death. Eat, therefore, and strengthen your bodies, for you are now animal flesh that cannot subsist without food and drink. Then Adam and Eve took the figs and began to eat of them. But God had put into them a mixture as of savory bread and blood. And the angels went from Adam and Eve who ate of their figs until they had satisfied their hunger. Then they put by what remained. But by the power of God the figs became full as before, because God blessed them. After this Adam and Eve arose and prayed with a joyful heart and renewed strength and praised and rejoiced abundantly that whole of that night. And this was the end of the eighty-third day. And when it was day, they rose and prayed after their custom, and went out of the cave. But as they felt great trouble from the food they had eaten, and to which they were not used, they went about in the cave, saying to each other, What has happened to us through eating, that this pain should have come upon us? Woe be to us, we shall die. Better for us to have died than to have eaten, and to have kept our bodies pure than to have defiled them with food. Then Adam said to Eve, This pain did not come to us in the garden, neither did we eat such bad food there. Think you, O Eve, that God will plague us through the food that is in us, or that our inwards will come out, or that God means to kill us with this pain before he has fulfilled his promise to us? Then Adam besought the Lord and said, Lord, let us not perish through the food we have eaten. O Lord, smite us not, but deal with us according to your great mercy, and forsake us not until the day of the promise you have made to us. Then God looked upon them, and at once fitted them for eating food, as unto this day, so that they should not perish. Then Adam and Eve came back into the cave sorrowful and weeping because of the alteration in their nature, and they both knew from that hour that they were altered beings, that their hope of returning to the garden was now cut off, and that they could not enter it, for that now their bodies had strange functions, and all flesh that requires food and drink for its existence cannot be in the garden. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthly and of the dust, and the inha of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us, and to bring us again into the garden, as he promised us. Then they prayed to God that he would have mercy on them, after which their mind was quieted, their hearts were broken, and their longing was cooled down, and they were like strangers on earth. That night Adam and Eve spent in the cave, where they slept heavily by reason of the food they had eaten. When it was morning, the day after that they had eaten food, Adam and Eve prayed in the cave, and Adam said to Eve, Lo, we asked for food of God, and he gave it, but now let us also ask him to give us a drink of water. Then they arose and went to the bank of the stream of water that was on the south border of the garden in which they had before thrown themselves. And they stood on the bank and prayed to God that he, that he would command them to drink of the water. Then the word of God came to Adam and said to him, O oh Adam, your body has become brutish and requires water to drink. Take you and drink you and Eve. Give thanks and praise. Adam and Eve then drew near and drank of it until their bodies felt refreshed. After having drunk, they praised God and then returned to their cave after their former custom. This happened at the end of the eighty-three days. And on the eighty-fourth day, they took two figs and hung them in the cave, together with the leaves of it, to be to them a sign and a blessing from God. And they placed them there until they should arise a posterity to them, who should see the wonderful things God had done to them. Then Adam and Eve again stood outside the cave and besought God to show them some food wherewith to nourish their bodies. Then the word of God came and said to them, O Adam, go down to the westward of the cave, as far as the land of dark soil, and there you shall find food. And Adam listened to the word of God, took Eve, and went to the land of dark soil, and found there wheat growing in the ear and ripe and figs to eat. And Adam rejoiced over it. Then the word of God came again to Adam and said to him, Take of this wheat and make you bread of it to nourish the body, your body withal. And God gave Adam's heart wisdom to work out the corn until it became bread. Adam accomplished all of that until he grew very faint and weary. He then returned to the cave rejoicing at what he had learned of what is done with wheat until it is made into bread for one's use. 
But when Adam and Eve went down into the land of black mud and came near to the wheat God had showed them, they saw it ripe and ready for reaping. As they had no sickle to reap it withal, they girt themselves and began to pull up the wheat until it was all done. Then they made it into a heap, and faint from heat and from thirst, they went under a shady tree where the breeze fanned them to sleep. But Satan saw what Adam and Eve had done, and he called his hosts and said to them, Since God has shown to Adam and Eve all about this wheat, wherewith to strengthen their bodies, and lo, they are come and have made a heap of it, and faint from the toil are now asleep. Come, let us set fire to this heap of corn and burn it, and let us take that bottle of water that is by them and empty it out so that they may find nothing to drink, and we kill them with hunger and thirst. Then when they wake up from their sleep and seek to return to the cave, we will come to them in the way and will lead them astray so that they die of hunger and thirst. When they may perhaps deny God and he destroy them, so shall we be rid of them. Then Satan and his hosts threw fire upon the wheat and consumed it. But from the heat of the flame Adam and Eve awoke from their sleep and saw the wheat burning and the bucket of water by them poured out. Then they wept and went back to the cave. But as they were going up from below the mountain where they were, Satan and his hosts met them in the form of angels praising God. Then Satan said to Adam, O oh Adam, why are you so pained with hunger and thirst? It seems to me that Satan has burnt up the wheat. And Adam said to him, Yes. But again Satan said to Adam, Come back with us, we are angels of God. God sent us to you to show you another field of corn better than that. And beyond it is a fountain of good water, and many trees where you shall dwell near it, and work one the cornfield to better purpose than that which Satan has consumed. Adam thought that he was true, and that the, they were angels who talked with him, and he went back with them. Then Satan began to lead astray Adam and Eve, eight days until they both fell down as if dead, from hunger, thirst, and faintness. Then he fled with his hosts and left them. Then God looked upon Adam and Eve, and upon what had come upon them from Satan, and how he made them perish. God therefore sent his word and raised up Adam and Eve from their state of death. Then Adam, when he was raised, said, O oh God, you have burnt and taken from us the corn which you had given us, and you have emptied us out of the bucket of water, and you have sent your angels who have waylaid us from the cornfield. Will you make us perish? If this be from you, O oh God, then take away our souls, but punish us not. Then God said to Adam, I did not burn down the wheat, and I did not pour the water out of the bucket, and I did not send my angels to lead you astray. But it is Satan, your master, who did it, he to whom you have subjected yourself. My commandment be, meanwhile, set aside. He it is who burnt down the corn, and poured out the water, and who has led you astray. And all the promises he has made you, truly are but faint and deceit and a lie. But now, O Adam, you shall acknowledge my good deeds done to you. And God told his angels to take Adam and Eve and to bear them up to the field of wheat, which they found as before, with the bucket full of water. There they saw a tree and found on it solid manna and wondered at God's power. And the angels commanded them to eat of the manna when they were hungry. And God adjured Satan with a curse not to come again and destroy the field of corn. Then Adam and Eve took of the corn and made of it an offering and took it and offered it up on the mountain, the place where they had offered up their first offering of blood. And they offered this oblation again on the altar they had built at first. And they stood up and prayed and besought the Lord, saying, Thus, O God, when we were in the garden, did our praises go up to you like this offering, and our innocence went up to you like incense. But now, O God, accept this offering from us, and turn us not back, rest of thy mercy. And then God said to Adam and Eve, Since you have made this oblation and have offered it to me, I shall make it my flesh, when I come down upon earth to save you, and I shall cause it to be offered continually upon an altar, for forgiveness and for mercy, unto those who partake of it duly. And God sent a bright fire upon the offering of Adam and Eve, and filled it with brightness, grace and light, and the Holy Ghost came down upon that oblation. And then God commanded an angel to take fire tongs like a spoon and with it to take an offering and bring it to Adam and Eve. And the angel did so as God had commanded him and offered it to them.
And the souls of Adam and Eve were brightened, and their hearts were filled with joy and gladness and with the praises of God. And God said to Adam, This shall be to you a custom to do so when affliction and sorrow come upon you. But your deliverance and your entrance into the garden shall not be until the days are fulfilled as agreed between you and me. Were it not so, I would of my mercy and pity for you bring you back to my garden and to my favor for the sake of the offering you have just made to my name. Adam rejoiced at these words which he heard from God, and he and Eve worshipped before the altar to which they bowed, and then went back to the cave of treasures. And this took place at the end of the twelfth day after the eightieth day, from the time Adam and Eve came out of the garden. And they stood up the whole night, praying until morning, and then went out of the cave. Then Adam said to Eve, with joy of heart, Because of the offering they had made to God, and that they had been accepted of Him, let us do this three times every week, on the fourth day, Wednesday, on the preparation day, Friday, and on the Sabbath, Sunday, all the days of our life. And as they agreed to these words between themselves, God was pleased with their thoughts and with the resolution they had each taken with the other. After this came the word of God to Adam and said, O Adam, you have determined beforehand the days in which suffering shall come upon me, when I am made flesh, for they are the fourth day, Wednesday, and the preparation day, Friday. But as to the first day, I created it at all things, and I raised the heavens. And again, through my rising again on this day, I will create joy, and raise them on high, who believe in me. O Adam, after this oblation, all the days of your life. Then God withdrew his word from Adam. But Adam continued to offer this oblation thus, every week, three times until the end of seven weeks. And on the first day, which is the fiftieth, Adam made an offering as he was wont, and he and Eve took it and came to the altar before God, as he had taught them. Then Satan, the hater of all good, envious of Adam and of his offering through which he found favor with God, hastened and took a sharp stone from among sharp iron stones, appeared in the form of a man, and went and stood by Adam and Eve. Adam was then offering on the altar, and had begun to pray with his hands spread unto God. Then Satan hastened with the sharp iron stone he had with him, and with it pierced Adam on the right side, when flowed butter, bl- blood and water, and Adam fell upon the altar like a corpse, and Satan fled. Then Eve came and took Adam and placed him below the altar, and there she stayed weeping over him, while a stream of blood flowed from Adam's side upon his offering. But God looked upon the death of Adam, He then sent his word, and raised him up, and said to him, Fulfill your offering, for indeed, Adam, it is worth much, and there is no shortcoming in it. God said further to Adam, Thus it will also happen to me on the earth, when I shall be pierced, and blood shall flow, and water from my side, and run over my body, which is the true offering, and which shall be offered on the altar as a perfect offering. Then God commanded Adam to finish his offering, and when he had ended it, he worshipped before God and praised him for the signs he had shown him. And God healed Adam in one day, which is the end of the seven weeks, and that is the fiftieth day. Then Adam and Eve returned from the mountain and went into the cave of treasures, as they were used to do. This completed for Adam and Eve, one hundred and forty days since their coming out of the garden. Then they both stood up that night and prayed to God, and when it was morning they went out and went down westward of the cave to the place where their corn was, and there rested into the shadow of a tree as they were one. But when there a multitude of beasts came all around them, it was Satan's doing, in his wickedness in order to wage war against Adam through marriage. After this, Satan, the hater of all good, took the form of an angel, and with him two others, so that they looked like the three angels who had brought to Adam gold, incense, and myrrh. They passed before Adam and Eve while they were under the tree, and greeted Adam and Eve with fair words that were full of guile. But when Adam and Eve saw their comely men, and heard their sweet speech, Adam rose, welcomed them, and brought them to Eve, and they remained all together. Adam's heart the while being glad, because he thought concerning them, that they were the same angels who had brought him gold, incense, and myrrh. Because when they came to Adam the first time, there came upon him from them peace and joy, through their bringing him good tokens, 
So Adam thought that they were come a second time to give him other tokens for him to rejoice with all. For he did not know it was Satan. Therefore he did receive them with joy and company with them. Then Satan, the tallest of them, said, Rejoice, O Adam, and be glad. Lo, God has sent us to you to tell you something. And Adam said, What is it? Then Satan answered, It is a light thing, yet it is a word of God. Will you hear from us and do it? But if you hear not, we will return to God and tell him that you would not receive his word. And Satan again said to Adam, Fear not, neither let a trembling come upon you. Do you not know us? But Adam said, I do not know you. Then Satan said to him, I am the angel who brought you gold and took it to the cave. This other one is he who brought you incense. And that third one is he who brought you myrrh when you were on the top of the mountain and who carried you to the cave. But as to the other angels, our fellows who bear you to the cave, God has not sent them with us this time. For he said to us, You suffice. So when Adam heard these words, he believed them and said to these angels, Speak the word of God that I may receive it. And Satan said to him, Swear and promise me that you will receive it. Then Adam said, I know not how to swear and promise. And Satan said to him, Hold out your hand and put it inside my hand. But then Adam held out his hand and put it into Satan's hand. When Satan said to him, Say now, so true as God is living, rational, and speaking, who raised the heavens in the space, and established the earth upon the waters, and has created me out of the four elements, and out of the dust of the earth, I will not break my promise, nor renounce my word. And Adam swore thus. Then Satan said to him, Lo, it is now some time since you came out of the garden, and you know neither wickedness nor evil. But now God says to you, To take Eve who came out of your side, and to wed her, that she bear you children, to comfort you, and to drive you from trouble, drive from you trouble and sorrow. Now this thing is not difficult, neither is there any scandal in it to you. But when Adam heard these words from Satan, he sorrowed much because of his oath and of his promise, and said, Shall I commit adultery with my flesh and my bones, and shall I sin against myself for God to destroy me, and to block me off from off the face of the earth? Since when at first I ate of the tree, he drove me out of the garden into this strange land, and deprived me of my bright nature, and brought death upon me. If then I should do this, he will cut off my life from the earth, and he will cast me into hell, and will plague me there a long time. But God never spoke the words that you have told me, and you are not God's angels, nor yet sent from him, but you are devils. Come to me under the false appearance of angels. Away from me, you cursed of God. Then those devils fled from before Adam, and he and Eve arose and returned to the cave of treasures and went into it. Then Adam said to Eve, If you saw well what I did, tell it not, for I sinned against God in swearing by his great name, and I have placed my hand another time into that of Satan. Eve then held her peace as Adam told her. Then Adam arose and spread his hands to God, beseeching and entreating him with tears to forgive him what he had done. And Adam remained thus standing and praying forty days and forty nights. He neither ate nor drank until he dropped down upon the earth from hunger and thirst. Then God sent his word to Adam, who raised him up from where he lay and said to him, O oh Adam, why have you sworn by my name, and why have you made agreement with Satan another time? But Adam wept and said, O oh God, forgive me, for I did this unwittingly, believing that they were God's angels. And God forgave Adam, saying to him, Beware of Satan. And he withdrew his word from Adam. Then Adam's heart was comforted, and he took Eve, and they went out of the cave to make some food for their bodies. But from that day Adam struggled in his mind about his wedding Eve afraid as he was to do it, lest God should be angry with him. Then Adam and Eve went to the river of water and sat on the bank, as people do when they enjoy themselves. But Satan was jealous of them, and would destroy them. Then Satan and ten from his hosts transformed themselves into maidens, unlike any others in the whole world for grace. They came up out of the river in the presence of Adam and Eve, and they said among themselves, Come, we will look at the faces of Adam and Eve, who are of the men upon earth. How beautiful they are, and how different is their look from our own faces. 
Then they came to Adam and Eve and greeted them and stood wondering at them. Adam and Eve looked at them also and wondered at their beauty and said, Is there then under us another world with such beautiful creatures as these in it? And those maidens said to Adam and Eve, Yes, indeed, we are an abundant creation. And then Adam said to them, But how do you multiply? And they answered him, We have husbands who wedded us, and we bear them children who grow up, and who in their turn wed and are wedded, and we also bear children, and thus we increase. And if it so be, O Adam, you will not believe us, we will show you our husbands and our children. Then they shouted over the river as if to call their husbands and their children, who came up from the river, men and children, and every one came to his wife, and children being with them. But when Adam and Eve saw them, they stood dumb and wondered at them. Then they said to Adam and Eve, You see our husbands and our children, wed Eve as we wed our wives, and you shall have children the same as we. This was a device of Satan to deceive Adam. Satan also thought within himself, God at first commanded Adam concerning the fruit of the tree, saying to him, Eat not of it, else of death you shall die. But Adam ate of it, and yet God did not kill him. He only decreed upon him death and plagues and trials until the day he shall come out of his body. Now then, if I deceive him to do this thing and to wed Eve without God's commandment, God will kill him then. Therefore did Satan work this apparition before Adam and Eve, because he sought to kill him and to make him disappear from off the face of the earth. Meanwhile, the fire of sin came upon Adam, and he thought of committing sin. But he restrained himself, fearing lest if he followed the, this advice of Satan, God would put him to death. Then Adam and Eve arose and prayed to God, while Satan and his hosts went down into the river in the presence of Adam and Eve, to let them see that they were going back to their own regions. Then Adam and Eve went back to the cave of treasures as they were wont, about evening time. And they both arose and prayed to God that night. Adam remained, standing in prayer, yet not knowing how to pray by reason of the thoughts of his heart, regarding his wedding Eve, and he continued so until morning. And when light arose, Adam said to Eve, Arise, let us go below the mountain, where they brought us gold, and let us ask the Lord concerning this matter. Then Eve said, What is that matter, O Adam? And he answered her, That I may request the Lord to inform me about wedding you, for I will not do it without his order, lest he make us perish, you and me. For those devils have set my heart on fire with thoughts of what they showed us in their sinful apparitions. Then Eve said to Adam, Why do we need to go below the mountain? Let us rather stand up and pray in our cave to God to let us know whether this counsel is good or not. Then Adam rose up in prayer and said, O oh God, you know that we transgressed against you, and from the moment we transgressed, we were bereft of our bright nature, and our body became brutish, requiring food and drink, and with animal desires. Command us, O oh God, not to give away, give way to them without your order, lest you bring upon us, bring us to nothing. For if you give us not the order, we shall be overpowered and follow that advice of Satan, and you will again make us perish. If not, then take our souls from us. Let us be rid of this animal lust. And if you give us no order respecting this thing, then sever Eve from me and me from her, and place us each far away from the other. Yet again, O oh God, when you have put us asunder from each other, the devils will deceive us with their apparitions and destroy our hearts and defile our thoughts toward each other. Yet, if it is not each of us towards the other, it will, at all events, be through their appearance when they show themselves to us. Here Adam ended his prayer. Then God looked upon the words of Adam that they were true, and that he could long await his order respecting the counsel of Satan. And God approved Adam in what he thought concerning this, and in the prayer he had offered in his presence. And the word of God came to Adam and said to him, O oh Adam, if only you had this caution at first, before you came out of the garden into this land. After that, God sent his angel who brought gold, and the angel who brought incense, and the angel who had brought myrrh to Adam, that they should inform him respecting his wedding Eve. Then those angels said to Adam, Take the gold and give it to Eve as a wedding gift, and betroth her. Then give her some incense and myrrh as a present, and be you, you and she, one flesh. 
Adam hearkened to the angels, and took the gold, and put it into Eve's bosom, in her garment, and betrothed her with his hand. Then the angels commanded Adam and Eve to rise and pray forty days and forty nights, and after that, that Adam should come in to his wife, for then this would be an act pure and undefiled, and he should have children who would multiply and replenish the face of the earth. Then both Adam and Eve received the words of the angels, and the angels departed from them. Then Adam and Eve began to fast and to pray until the end of the forty days, and then they came together, as the angels had told them. And from the time Adam left the garden until he wedded Eve were two hundred and twenty-three days, that is, seven months and thirteen days. Thus was Satan's war with Adam defeated. And they dwelt on the earth working in order to continue in the well-being of their bodies, and were so until the nine months of Eve's, Eve's childbearing were ended, and the time drew near when she must be delivered. Then she said to Adam, this cave is a pure spot by reason of the signs worked in it since we left the garden, and we shall again pray in it. It is not me, then, that I should bring forth in it. Let us rather repair to that of the sheltering rock, which Satan hurled at us when, we wished, when he wished to kill us with it, but that was held up and spread as an awning over us by the command of God, and formed a cave. Then Adam removed Eve to that cave, and when the time came that she should bring forth, she travailed much. So was Adam sorry, and his heart suffered for her sake, for she was near to death, that the word of God to her should be fulfilled. In suffering shall you bear a child, and in sorrow shall you bring forth your child. But when Adam saw the strait in which Eve was, he arose and prayed to God, and said, O Lord, look upon me and the eye of your mercy, with the eye of your mercy, and bring her out of her distress. And God looked at his maidservant Eve, and delivered her, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and with him a daughter. Then Adam rejoiced at Eve's deliverance, and also over the children she had borne him. And Adam ministered to Eve in the cave until the end of eight days, when they named the son Cain and the daughter Lelua. The meaning of Cain is hater, because he hated his sister in the mother's womb, before they came out of it. Therefore did Adam name him Cain. But Lulua means beautiful, because she was more beautiful than her mother. Then Adam and Eve waited until Cain and his sister were forty days old, when Adam said to Eve, We will make an offering and offer it up on behalf of the children. And Eve said, We will make one offering for the firstborn son, and afterwards we shall make one for the daughter. Then Adam prepared an offering, and he and Eve offered it up for their children, and brought it to the altar they had built at first. And Adam offered up the offering, and besought God to accept his offering. Then God accepted Adam's offering, and sent a light from heaven that shone upon the, sh the offering. And Adam and the son drew near to the offering, but Eve and the daughter did not approach to it. Then Adam came down from the, upon the altar, and they were joyful. And Adam and Eve waited until the daughter was eighty days old. And then Adam prepared an offering, and took it to Eve and to the children, and they went to the altar where Adam offered it up as he was wont, asking the Lord to accept his offering. And the Lord accepted the offering of Adam and Eve. Then Adam, Eve, and the children drew near together and came down from the mountain rejoicing. But they did not return to the cave in which they were born, but came to the cave of treasures in order that the children should grow, go round it and be blessed with the tokens brought from the garden. But after they had been blessed with these tokens, they went back to the cave in which they were born. However, before Eve had offered up the offering, Adam had taken her and had gone with her to the river of water in which they threw themselves at first, and there they washed themselves. Adam washed his body, and Eve's hers also clean, after the suffering and distress that had come upon them. But Adam and Eve, after washing themselves in the river of water, returned every night to the cave of treasures where they prayed and were blessed and then went back to their cave, where the children were born. So did Adam and Eve, until the children had done sucking. Then, when they were weaned, Adam made an offering for the souls of his children, other than the three times he made an offering for them, every week. When the days of nursing the children were ended, Eve again conceived, when, and when her days were accomplished, she brought forth another son and daughter, and they named the son Abel and the daughter Aklia. 
Then at the end of forty days, Adam made an offering for the son, and at the end of eighty days, he made, an, an, made another offering for the daughter, and did by them as he had done before, by Cain and his sister Lelua. He brought them to the cave of treasures, where they received a blessing, and then returned to the cave where they were born. After the birth of these, Eve ceased from childbearing. And the children began to wax stronger and to grow in stature. But Cain was hard-hearted and ruled over his younger brother. And oftentimes when his father made an offering, he would remain behind and not go with them to offer up. But as to Abel, he had a meat cart and was obedient to his father and mother, whom he often moved to make an offering, because he loved it and prayed and fasted much. Then came this sign to Abel. As he was coming into the cave of treasures and saw the golden rods and incense and the mirror, he inquired of his parents, Adam and Eve, concerning them, and said to them, How did you come by these? And Adam told them all that had befallen them, and Abel felt deeply about what his father told him. Furthermore, his father Adam told him of the works of God and of the garden, and after that he remained behind his father the whole of that night in the cave of treasures. And that night, while he was praying, Satan appeared to him in the figure of a man, who said to him, You have oftentimes moved your father to make an offering, to fast and to pray. Therefore I will kill you, and make you perish from this world. But as for Abel, he prayed to God, and drove away Satan from him, and did not believe the words of the devil. Then when it was day, an angel of God appeared to him, and said to him, Shorten neither fasting nor prayer nor offering an oblation to your God. For lo, the Lord has accepted your prayer. Do not be afraid of the figure which appeared to you in the night, and who cursed you to death. And the angel departed from him. Then, when it was day, Abel came to Adam and Eve, and told them of the vision he had seen. But when they heard it, they grieved much over it, yet said nothing to him about it. They only comforted him. But as to hard-hearted Cain, Satan came to him by night, showed himself and said to him, Since Adam and Eve love your brother Abel much more than they love you, and wish to join him in marriage to your beautiful sister, because they love him, but wish to join you in marriage to his ill-favored sister, because they hate you. Now therefore I counsel you, when they do that, to kill your brother, then your sister will be left for you, and his sister will be cast away. And Satan departed from him, but the wicked one remained behind in the heart of Cain, who sought many a time to kill his brother. But when Adam saw that the elder brother hated the younger, he endeavored to soften their hearts, and said to Cain, Take, O my son, of the fruits of your sowing, and make an offering to God, that he may forgive you your wickedness and your sin. And he said to Abel, Take you of your sowing, and make an offering to bring it to God that he may forgive your wickedness and your sin. Then Abel listened to his father's voice, and took of his sowing, and made a good offering, and said to his father, Adam, Come with me, to show me how to offer it up. And they went to Adam and Eve with him, and showed him how to offer up his gift from the altar. Then, after that, they stood up and prayed that God would accept Abel's offering. Then God looked upon Abel and accepted his offering. And God was more pleased with Abel than, than with his offering, because of his good heart and pure body. There was no trace of guile in him. Then they came down from the altar and went to the cave in which they dwelt. But Abel, by reason of his joy at having made his offering, repeated it three times a week, after the example of his father Adam. But as to Cain, he took no pleasure in offering. But after much anger on his father's part, he offered up his gift once, and when he did offer up, his eyes were on the offering he made, and he took the smallest of his sheep for an offering, and his eye was again on it. Therefore God did not accept his offering, because his heart was full of murderous thoughts. And they all lived together thus in the cave in which Eve had brought forth, until Cain was fifteen years old, and Adam, Abel twelve years old. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, the children are grown up, we must think of finding wives for them. Then Eve answered, How can we do it? Then Adam said to her, We will join Abel's sister in marriage to Cain, and Cain's sister to Abel. Then said Eve to Adam, I do not like Cain, because he is hard-hearted, but let them live and bide until we offer up to the Lord in their behalf. And Adam said no more. Meanwhile, Satan came to Cain in the figure of a man of the field, and said to him, 
Behold, Adam and Eve have taken counsel together about the marriage of you two, and they have agreed to marry Abel's sister to you and your sister to him. But it was, if it was not that I love you, I would not have told this thing to you. Yet if you will take my advice and listen to me, I will bring you on your wedding day beautiful robes, gold and silver and plenty, and my relations will attend you. Then Cain said with joy, Where are your relations? And Satan answered, My relations are in a garden in the north, whither I once meant to bring your father Adam, but he would not accept my offer. But you, if you will receive my words, and if you will come to me after your wedding, you shall rest from the misery in which you are, and you shall rest and be better off than your father Adam. At these words of Satan, Cain opened his ears and leaned towards his speech, and he did not remain in the field, but went to Eve his mother, and beat her, and cursed her, and said to her, Why are you, why are you about taking my sister to wed to my brother? Am I dead? His mother, however, quieted him and sent him to the field where he had been. Then, when Adam came, she told him of what Cain had done. But Adam grieved and held his peace and did not say a word. Then, the next day, Adam said to Cain his son, Take of your sheep, young and good, and offer them up to your God, and I will speak to your brother and make to his God an offering of corn. They both hearkened to their father Adam, and they took up their offerings and offered them upon the mountain by the altar. But Cain behaved haste haughtily towards his brother, and thrust him from the altar, and would not let him offer up his gift upon the altar, but he offered his own upon it with a proud heart, full of guile and fraud. But as for Abel, he set up stones that were near at hand, and upon that he offered up his gift with a heart humble and free from guile. Cain was then standing by the altar on which he had offered up his gift, and he cried to God to accept his offering. But God did not accept it from him, neither did a divine fire come down to consume his offering. But he remained standing over against the altar, out of humor with and wrath, looking towards his brother Abel to see if God would, not ex would accept his offering or not. And Abel prayed to God to accept his offering. Then a divine fire came down and consumed his offering, and God smelt the sweet savor of his offering, because Abel loved him and rejoiced in him. And because God was well pleased with him, he sent him an angel of light in the figure of a man who had partaken of his offering, because he had smelled the sweet savor of his offering, and they comforted Abel and strengthened his heart. But Cain was looking on all that took place at his brother's offering and was angry on account of it. And then he opened his mouth and blasphemed God because he had not accepted his offering. But God said to Cain, Why is your countenance sad? Be righteous that I may accept your offering. Not against me has you, have you murmured, but against yourself. And God said this to Cain in rebuke, and because he abhorred him and his offering. And Cain came down from the altar, his color changed and of a woeful countenance, and came to his father and mother and told them all that had befallen him. And Adam grieved much because God had not accepted Cain's offering. But Abel came down rejoicing and with a gladsome heart and told his father and mother how God had accepted his offering. And they rejoiced at it and kissed his face. And Abel said to his father, Because Cain thrust me from the altar and would not allow me to offer my gift upon it, I made an altar for myself and offered my gift upon it. But when Adam heard this, he was very sorry because it was the altar he had built at first and upon which he had offered his own gift. As to Cain, he was so sullen and so angry that he went into the field where Satan came to him and said to him, since your brother Abel has taken refuge with your father Adam, because you did thrust him from the altar, they have kissed his face, and they rejoice over him far more than over you. When Cain heard these words of Satan, he was filled with rage, and he let no one know, but he was lying in wait to kill his brother until he brought him into the cave, and then said to him, O oh brother, the country is so beautiful, and there are such beautiful and pleasurable trees in it, and charming to look at. But, brother, you have never been one day in the field to take your pleasure therein. Today, O oh my brother, I would very much wish that you would come with me into the field to enjoy yourself and to bless our fields and our flocks. For you are righteous, and I love you much, O oh my brother, but you have estranged yourself from me. Then Abel consented to go with his brother Cain into the field. But before going out, Cain said to Abel, Wait for me until I fetch a staff because of the wild beasts. Then Abel stood waiting in his innocence, but Cain, the forward, 
fetched a staff and went out. And they began, Cain and his brother, able to walk in the way, Cain talking to him and comforting him to make him forget everything. And so they went on until they came to a lonely place, where there were no sheep. Then Abel said to Cain, Behold, my brother, we are weary of walking, for we see none of the trees, nor of the fruits, nor of the verdure, nor of the sheep, nor any of the things of which you did tell me. Where are those sheep of yours that you did tell me to bless? Then Cain said to him, Come on, and presently you shall see many beautiful things, but go before me until I come up to you. Then went Abel forward, but Cain remained behind him. And Abel was walking in his innocence, without guile, not believing his brother would kill him. Then Cain, when he came up to him, comforted him with his talk, walking a little behind him. Then he hastened and smote him with his staff, blow upon blow, until he was stunned. But when Abel fell down upon the ground, seeing that his brother meant to kill him, he said to Cain, O oh, my brother, have pity on me. By, your, by the breast we have sucked, do not smite me. By the womb that bare us, and that brought us into this world, Spite me not unto death with your that staff. If you will kill me, take one of these large stones and kill me outright. Then Cain, the hard-hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and smote his brother with it upon the head until his brains oozed out, and he weltered in his blood before him. And Cain repented not of what he had done, but the earth, when the blood of righteous, the righteous Abel fell upon it, trembled as it drank his blood and would have brought Cain to nothing for it. And the blood of Abel cried mysteriously to God to avenge him of this murder. Then Cain began at once to dig the earth wherein to lay his brother, for he was trembling from fear the fear that came upon him when he saw the earth tremble on his account. He then cast his brother into the pit he made and covered him with dust, but the earth would not receive him, but it threw him up at once. Again did Cain dig the earth and hid his brother in it, but again did the earth throw him up on itself, until three times did the earth thus throw upon itself the body of Abel. The muddy earth threw him up the first time, because he was not the first creation, and it threw him up the second time, and would not receive him, because he was righteous and good, and was killed without a cause. And the earth threw him up the third time, and would not receive him, that there might remain before his brother a witness against him. And so did the earth mock Cain, until the word of God came to him concerning his brother. Then was God angry, and much displeased at Abel's death. And he thundered from heaven, and lightnings went before him. And the word of the Lord God came from heaven to Cain, and said to him, Where is Abel your brother? Then Cain answered with a proud heart and a gruff voice, How, O God, am I my brother's keeper? And then God said to Cain, Cursed be the earth that has drunk the blood of Abel your brother. And you, be you trembling and shaking, and this will be a sign to you, that whoever finds you shall kill you. But Cain wept because God had said those words to him. And Cain said to him, O oh God, whosoever finds me shall kill me, and I shall be blotted out from the face of the earth. Then God said to Cain, Whoever shall find you shall not kill you, because before this God had been saying to Cain, I shall forego seven punishments on him who kills Cain. But as for the word of God to Cain, where is your brother? God said it in mercy for him, to try and make him repent. For if Cain had repented at that time, and had said, O oh God, forgive me my sin and the murder of my brother, God would then have forgiven him his sin. And as to God saying to Cain, Cursed be the ground that has drunk the blood of your brother, that also was God's mercy on Cain. For God did not curse him, but he cursed the ground although it was not the ground that had killed Abel, and had committed iniquity. For it was meet that the curse should fall upon the murderer. Yet in mercy did God so manage his thoughts, as that no one should know it, and turn away from Cain. And he said to him, Where is your brother? To which he answered and said, I do not know. But then the Creator said to him, Be trembling and quaking. Then Cain trembled and became terrified. As through, through this sign did God make him an example before all the creation, as the murderer of his brother. Also did God bring trembling and terror upon him, that he might see the peace in which he was at first, and see also the trembling and terror he endured at the last, so that he might humble himself before God and repent of his sin, and seek the peace he enjoyed at the first. And in the word of God that said, I will forego seven punishments on whomsoever kills Cain, God was not seeking to kill Cain with the sword, 
But he sought to make him die of fasting and praying and weeping by hard rule until the time that he was delivered up from his sin. And the seven punishments are the seven generations during which God awaited Cain for the murder of his brother. But as to Cain, ever since he had killed his brother, he could find no rest in any place. But he went back to Adam and Eve, trembling, terrified, and defiled with blood.